Welcome to Manhua Empire Recap, your go-to channel for Manhua stories. Hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and join us on our journey through the pages of adventures. Get ready for the magic of Manhua like never before. Enjoy watching. In a one unusual day, the protagonist stirred from sleep to the jarring noise, awakening in an unfamiliar setting. Disoriented and feeling nauseous, he attempted to make sense of the commotion around him. As his eyes fluttered open, he was greeted by the sight of several individuals sharing the same surreal space, a room enclosed entirely by glass walls, the atmosphere reminiscent of outer space. He couldn't shake off the puzzlement of their shared confinement and the sudden company of these unknown individuals. Gazing through the transparent walls, the protagonist began to regain a semblance of reality amidst the bewildering setting. However, what seized his attention most was the site below, an intriguing ground floor adorned with a foreign alphabet, its characters emitting a mesmerizing glow. Overwhelmed by his inability to comprehend the situation and the peculiar surroundings, panic began to well up within the protagonist. However, amidst the rising panic, an unexpected and astonishing sight unfolded before their eyes. A woman, emanating an ethereal glow that outshone everyone in the room, appeared as if materializing from the depths of a dream. The already bewildered group found their confusion escalating as a hulking creature, an amalgamation resembling an orc and a golem, pounded furiously against the barrier of their room. A sense of denial swept over them, encounters with angelic beings, strange surroundings, and now a monstrous entity could be anything but a bizarre illusion. Some members started to entertain the idea that this could all be an elaborate prank or a carefully orchestrated hoax. Despite the growing skepticism among some, the protagonist remained lost in bewilderment. His mind struggled to reconcile the stark contrast between the familiar comfort of his home just moments ago and the fantastical, otherworldly elements now confronting him. In the calm familiarity of his home before he was sent to an unusual place, the protagonist sat at the dining table, relishing a meal with his family. Mid-bite, the tranquility was interrupted by the abrupt buzz of his phone, signaling an incoming text. Perplexed, the protagonist furrowed his brow as he read the text message. Questions flooded his thoughts, wondering about the game in question, who might have sent the text, and why it lacked essential context. Considered with the possibility that it might be a newly released video game or some form of digital entertainment, the protagonist was willing to explore. With uncertainty clouding his understanding, he made a swift decision, choosing to respond affirmatively without a moment's hesitation, tapping the yes button on his phone screen. Instantly, the protagonist found himself thrust into an unexpected and distressing scenario, abruptly transported into an incredibly confined space. Surrounded by a cacophony of voices, the atmosphere was chaotic, filled with the clamor of people all around, indicating that everyone shared the same sense of urgency and desperation to escape this confining space. Amidst the chaos, one person stood out in their attempt to bring a semblance of calmness, this individual endeavored to restore a sense of order by initiating a conversation, seeking to jog everyone's memory about events preceding their current bewildering situation. Observing the protagonist's relative silence amidst the chaos, the person approached him, recognizing his calm demeanor amid the uproar. Unable to respond, the protagonist watched the individual leave, feeling frustrated by the inability to communicate amidst the pandemonium. Yet, after the encounter, it affirmed that this experience was starkly real, dispelling any doubts of it being fictitious or a dream. As the protagonist attempted to make sense of the situation, the ethereal figure, exuding an angelic presence, reappeared before them. To the group's astonishment and horror, the woman, once radiating a celestial aura, unleashed a display of fiery magic outside the glass confines. The powerful surge of fire magic had a specific purpose, it is to repel the monstrous threat attempting to breach their enclosed sanctuary. As the attention of everyone within the confined space fixated on the enigmatic figure, she welcomed them to the enigmatic realm known as the Otherworld, expressing gratitude for their acceptance of the invitation. However, despite her words, a lingering sense of confusion persisted among the group since one of them could recollect accepting such an invitation. The goddess figure, in an attempt to clarify the situation, revealed their selection as chosen heroes destined to save a dying continent, however, her words sparked frustration as saviors for an entire land felt far too unrealistic. 
The goddess urged for calmness, pleading with the assembly to listen, she emphasized the necessity of understanding her guidance for their survival, since not everyone among them would have the chance to venture to the dying continent. The goddess further explained the criteria, stating that only those capable of clearing a tutorial would earn the chance to journey to the continent, which elicited a sense of unfairness among the people. The assembly began to listen attentively, their initial skepticism giving way to a reluctant acceptance of the gravity of the situation as the goddess repeated her instructions. The goddess reiterated the limited number of individuals who could proceed to the dying continent. Her words made some among the group couldn't contain their emotions and erupted in tears. However, among the distraught and emotionally shaken group, one individual was too calm. The goddess began by elucidating the environment they were in, labeling it as the start point, likening it to a waiting room designed as a pyramid with transparent walls. Within this space, essential supplies crucial for survival, such as food, water, and an array of weapons, were provided, aimed at aiding their journey in the other world. Continuing her explanation, she delved into the concept of special classes available to the individuals. These classes bestowed unique traits upon the players, offering them distinct abilities tailored to their individuality. In an instant, he realized that the world he now found himself in mirrored the fantastical realms he had only witnessed in video games and novels. As the goddess continued her elucidation, she introduced the hierarchical structure of ranks, she delineated the classification into common, rare, heroic, and legendary ranks, each representing varying degrees of rarity and power. Given their novice status, the goddess revealed that the initial provisions provided were of common rank. These encompassed basic weapons essential for survival and initial combat encounters where the protagonist chose a spear. In her concluding announcement, she tasked them with ensuring their safety and survival within the start point until a pivotal moment, the breaking of the pyramid's roof, as if struck by a colossal rock. As the protagonist scrutinized the impending event, he was taken aback to discover that the destructive force wasn't caused by a massive rock, but rather by colossal hands punching through the roof. Reality struck as the walls crumbled, and the group collectively realized that the goddess figure's mention of a tutorial wasn't a mere jest. In the midst of the chaos, the goddess explained the diversity among the gathered individuals, each harboring unique personalities. She emphasized that their current surroundings would play a pivotal role in their growth and development. Following the chaos and destruction, the goddess figure directed them to say the words status window to gain a clearer understanding of the information she wished to convey. Without hesitation, the entire assembly echoed the words status window. The protagonist, although initially composed and nonchalant, found himself compelled to participate along with the rest. Upon summoning the status window, a radiant line materialized individually in front of each person. As the glow subsided, the complete status window materialized, displaying personal data such as name, age, and player class. For the protagonist, his name was Lee Ki-young, 25 years old. However, confusion clouded Ki-young's understanding as he examined the numerical values indicating his strength and stamina, both registering at levels 10 and 11, leaving him perplexed about whether these figures were considered favorable or unfavorable. Surprise etched across Ki-young's face as the status window system delivered a notification that he had acquired a trait. The anticipation, fueled by the goddess figure's earlier mention of unique traits, heightened Ki-young's excitement as he eagerly delved into his newfound ability. Opening the traits section, Ki-young discovered a skill named Mind's Eye, classified as a heroic rank, granting him the ability to inspect the status windows and hidden talent ranks of both himself and others. Ki-young's eyes darted around the room, and to his surprise, the power of his newly acquired trait, Mind's Eye, allowed him to clearly perceive the status windows of everyone present. The realization of this newfound ability, while potent, also brought a sense of unease and overwhelm to Ki-young. Curiosity propelled Ki-young to observe others and their traits, wondering what unique abilities each person had acquired. As Ki-young observed others and their traits, he was taken aback by the discovery that some had acquired more powerful abilities, such as Growth Limit. Intrigued, Ki-young noticed the overall rating feature on the status windows, revealing that some individuals possessed incredibly average talent. To his surprise, their ratings were only marginally better than his own. Eager to gauge the extent of his own potential, he directed his mind's eye toward his own status window, seeking to unveil the overall rating that would shed light on the convenience bestowed upon him. 
As Keong scrutinized his own status window, he felt a sense of disappointment and disbelief since the talent he had acquired advised him to limit his actions due to possessing the worst talent among the group. Keung's eyes fixated on the words emphasizing the severity of his predicament. The careful reading only accentuated the negativity embedded in the assessment, painting a stark picture of his perceived disadvantage. A sense of injustice swept over Keung as he perceived the system underestimating his capabilities. The feeling of unfairness resonated strongly within him, fueling a surge of frustration at how the system seemed to have dealt him an unfavorable hand. However, Keung wasn't alone in his displeasure. The room buzzed with a collective reaction as other players expressed their discontentment with the results they had received. Keung, grappling with the perceived disadvantage imposed by his trait, couldn't shake the feeling that the system had set him on a path where winning seemed elusive. After they checked their status window, the goddess figures call for their attention as the monsters breached the start point, the atmosphere tensed with imminent danger. In her final words, the goddess wished them all good luck, leaving the group to confront the daunting challenge that had unfolded before them. While chaos erupted around him, Ki Young remained rooted in his disappointment, his nonchalance unabated by the turmoil. As the skirmish unfolded, Ki Young's disheartenment kept him aloof, detached even as others engaged in the frantic struggle for survival. Amid the mayhem, one individual recognized the need to rouse Ki Young from his apathy, attempting to break through his detachment. The urgency in the person's voice penetrated Ki Young's indifference, emphasizing the imperative to arm himself against the encroaching monsters, echoing the guidance of both the status window and the goddess figure. Recognizing the need for collaboration and understanding the potential advantages granted by the status window, Ki Young swiftly turned his focus to inspecting the person's status window. With a calculated assessment, Ki Young sought to discern whether Diaku possessed attributes or abilities that could be advantageous for their survival. Ki Young's surprise registered visibly as he perused Diaku's status window due to his endurance level was an impressive 30, labeled as magic. Recognizing the potential synergy between his own unique trait and Diaku's exceptional endurance, he glimpsed a pathway toward survival by making Diaku his human shield. As the relentless surge of monsters continued, a palpable menace pervaded the once secure space. The majority of the players rallied to confront the imminent threat, however, not everyone proved fortunate, and some succumbed to the challenges of the game, meeting an unfortunate end. Urgent cries and advisories filled the air as these individuals urged everyone to arm themselves, emphasizing the crucial importance of grabbing a weapon to stand a chance against the encroaching monsters. In a strategic move, Kiyong opted to collaborate with Diaku. Kiyong instructed Diaku to lead the way, assuming the role of support in their collaborative effort. He understood that standing idly by wasn't an option, and it was crucial for them to proactively engage against the menacing monsters. Diaku, witnessing Kiyong's resolute spirit and determination, was filled with admiration. In the midst of crafting their strategies, Kiyong and Diaku remained vigilant, sensing the impending approach of a monster. Their anticipation heightened as a small creature, resembling a goblin with sharp fangs, surged toward them. Swift to react, Kiyong sprang into action, intercepting the oncoming threat before it could reach Diaku. Kiyong, noticing Diaku's lapse in vigilance, couldn't help but scold him for not keeping his guard up. Recognizing the importance of maintaining a heightened awareness, Kiyong took the lead while instructing Diaku to run swiftly to avoid being caught by the encroaching monsters. As the duo moved forward, Kiyong and Diaku remained sharp, attuned to their surroundings. Satisfied with having Diaku as a companion, Kiyong felt a surge of happiness. He envisioned the possibility of Diaku shielding him from the ferocious monsters that lurked in the other world. However, the sudden emergence of more mini monsters disrupted their momentary peace. Kiyong found himself taking the lead once again, decisively facing the approaching threats. As Kiyung focused on dealing with the monsters in his line of sight, one cunning creature managed to approach from his blind spot, poised to strike. A stroke of fortune intervened, however, as Diaku swiftly stepped in, employing his shield to thwart the impending attack and shield both of them from harm. Following the intervention, Diaku, radiating a pleasant aura, genuinely inquired about Kiyung's well-being. Expressing his gratitude to Diaku for the timely intervention, Kiyong couldn't shake the realization that he had acquired a valuable and useful companion in their perilous journey through the other world. 
the dynamic duo continued their relentless movement, running forward with the shared goal of avoiding any major adversaries that might threaten their survival. Their perseverance led them to an unexpected encounter. A glowing, imposing door adorned with a large symbol that held the promise of an exit, a potential escape from the tumultuous challenges. With the glowing door before them, Kiyong and Diaku allowed a glimmer of hope to kindle within. However, their joy was abruptly cut short when a desperate cry for help pierced the air from behind them. Kiyong, now acutely aware of the looming threat behind him, felt the heavy weight of the pursuing monsters closing in. As the cry for help echoed behind them, Kiyong couldn't resist the urge to look back and witness the desperate scene unfolding. His gaze fell upon a fellow player, desperately seeking assistance and falling prey to the relentless assaults of the monsters. Despite the proximity of the exit and the pleas of concern from Diaku, Kiyong's conscience weighed heavily on him. Despite Kiyong's practical nature and prioritization of survival, witnessing the stranger's desperate plea stirred a profound sense of pity within him. The stranger's cries and desperate pleas for salvation had a transformative effect on Kiyong, softening his resolve and eliciting a deep well of empathy. Without hesitation, Kiyong's compassion overrode his survival instincts. In a moment that weighed heavily on his conscience, Kiyong chose to prioritize his own survival over aiding the distressed individual. The stranger, taken aback and surprised by Kiyong's unexpected response, clung to a false hope that was swiftly shattered. Expressing the difficulty, he acknowledged that, no matter how agonizing, survival demanded certain sacrifices since the loot bag, representing a potential lifeline in the other world, became the focal point of Kiyong's determined escape. Running as fast as he could, Kiyong aimed to distance himself from the haunting cries of the stranger and the encroaching monsters. Diaku, witnessing Kiyong's surprising decision, couldn't hide his astonishment at the turn of events. Despite his initial surprise, Diaku, grappling with the harsh reality of the other world, reluctantly came to understand Kiyong's decision. Survival became the driving force, prompting him to run as fast as he could to catch up with Kiyong. But the poor man, he was left there all alone. He was desperate to be saved, but he was now devoured by these horrible creatures. Despite the heaviness in his heart and the unspoken remorse, Kiyong silently offered a quiet apology to the fallen player. In an effort to find solace, Kiyong chose to look at the brighter side of the situation. Expressing gratitude in an unexpected twist, he thanked the fallen player for the loot bag. Having successfully escaped the first round, Kiyong and Diaku sought refuge in a cave, finding a momentary respite. As they found themselves in the cave, Diaku turned to Kiyong, seeking guidance on their next steps, however. To Diaku's surprise, Kiyong's mind, much like his own, was crowded with uncertainty. Kiyong's surprise mirrored Diaku's as he discovered that the seemingly imposing and big-hearted Diaku also sought direction and leadership. Acknowledging the need for a strategy, Kiyong proposed that they first determine the nature of the place they were in. In an attempt to gain some clarity, he asked Diaku if he had any familiarity with video game settings. Kiyong, perceptive and quick-witted, began to sense a striking familiarity in the other world's settings, akin to elements found in video games like the status window, stats, title, and equipment classes. Kiyong explained to Diaku that the key to progress and survival lies in leveling up by confronting and annihilating monsters to enhance their stats and obtaining valuable classes that would empower them in their ongoing battle. Kiyong conveyed a resolute belief that their path forward necessitated getting stronger. Grateful for the provisions they had managed to secure like food, water, weapons, and a shield, Kiyong acknowledged that, compared to other less fortunate players, they were relatively well-equipped. In the midst of contemplating the chaos surrounding them, an unexpected turn of events unfolded as a monster sensed their location in the cave where they sought momentary refuge. The element of surprise gripped both Kiyong and Diaku. Contrary to their expectations, the creature made no attempt to launch an attack. Utilizing his newly acquired ability, Mind's Eye, he discovered that the creature before them was a low-ranked monster, characterized by poor eyesight, low intelligence, and a reliance solely on instincts. Recognizing their stroke of luck with the monster's poor eyesight, Kiyong swiftly formulated a plan. He gestured to Diaku, urging him to remain silent to avoid alerting the creature to their presence. With careful and deliberate movements, Kiyong reached for his weapon, fully aware of the need for stealth and precision. Feeling a profound sense of nervousness, Diaku found himself at odds with Kiyong's conviction that the low-ranked monster must be annihilated. 
Seizing the moment without a hint of hesitation, ki -young's decisive nature came to the forefront, as he aimed his weapon at the creature with precision and fearlessness. In stark contrast, Diaku remained unsettled, grappling with the unfolding situation and the intensity of ki -young's actions. ki -young's unleashed rage appeared to stem from a reservoir of bottled-up emotions manifesting within the game as he confronted the low-ranked monster. Caught off guard by ki -young's swift and fearless counterattack, the low-ranked monster found itself unable to react effectively. In the end, with Diaku offering his support, ki -young emerged victorious defeating the surprised creature. As the battle concluded, ki -young took a moment to catch his breath, the intensity of his moves taking a toll. The status window, however, brought a glimmer of reward, granting ki -young an additional point for his strength. Meanwhile, Diaku, unable to contain his admiration, continued to commend ki -young for his courage and effectiveness in the face of adversity. ki -young couldn't help but cringe at the genuine intensity of Diaku's stare. Recognizing the need to ease the atmosphere, ki -young approached Diaku, offering a reminder that if his own seemingly fragile body could stand against a monster, then Diaku, with his strength, had the potential to excel even further. As a camaraderie formed between them, Diaku, seeking to solidify their newfound connection, decided to ask for ki -young's name. ki -young, while introducing himself, retained the mindset of someone prioritizing survival in the harsh reality of the other world. In response, Diaku introduced himself and, expressing a desire for a more familial connection, asked if he could address ki -young as an older brother, granting Diaku the freedom to address him however he liked. But first, ki -young diverted their attention to a makeshift solution. Confusion clouded Diaku's face as ki -young suddenly began disassembling an embroidered piece of cloth that lay on the ground before them. However, ki -young's ingenuity became evident as he revealed that the torn cloth was meant to serve a purpose, that is to provide them with at least one endurance point, strengthening their resilience. The gesture, born out of ki -young's resourcefulness, touched Diaku, prompting admiration for his newfound companion's intelligence, with Diaku expressing his commitment to follow ki -young's lead. The duo prepared to take the next step in their journey by breaking free from being classless. However, their plans took an abrupt turn when an intense vibration resonated through the ground. It prompted both of them to remain alert for the possible arrival of another monster. Adding to the complexity of the situation, a fellow player was in desperate need, being chased by the formidable monsters. The disturbance was not caused by a lone monster, but by a trio large and menacing. With Diaku by his side, he contemplated a strategic retreat, acknowledging the challenge of handling a pack of monsters. Despite the impulse to escape, ki -young couldn't help but feel a curiosity about the monsters. And more intriguingly, about the identity of the girl being pursued by these creatures due to the chaotic situation they found themselves in. While sprinting alongside Diaku, ki -young activated his mind's eye skills once again, attempting to glean more information about the girl. The revelation unfolded as ki -young discovered that the girl was named Young Hae Nim, with stats that predominantly fell under the rare category. However, one particular stat caught ki -young's attention, and that is Heian's magic power, a level 10 attribute, was classified as legendary. The astonishing nature of this discovery left ki -young momentarily halted in his tracks, causing surprise in Diaku. The revelation that young Heian Nim possessed a legendary ranked stat, specifically in magic power, left ki -young in a state of profound astonishment. Recognizing the invaluable potential that Young Hae and Nim brought to their team, ki -young made a heartfelt request to Diaku, asking for his assistance in saving Hae and from the pursuing monsters. Diaku, however, expressed concern about their ability to overcome the challenging task, considering the trio of monsters they would have to face. As Hae and exerted herself to sprint away from the relentless pursuit, she eventually caught sight of ki -young. In response, ki -young, opting for a stealthier approach, minimized his voice and guided Haiyan to run towards their location. Understanding the urgency and the need for cooperation, Haiyan swiftly grasped ki -young's guidance. With young Haiyan Nim now hidden alongside ki -young and Diaku, the trio braced themselves for the impending approach of the monsters. As the creatures drew near, it was Diaku who first attracted their attention, being at the forefront of their group. Reacting swiftly, Diaku took the lead and drew his shield, positioning himself to block the oncoming monster. Meanwhile, seeing Diaku engaged in the struggle, ki -young decided to take decisive action, joining the effort to support Diaku and fend off the encroaching monsters. 
With swift precision, Kion seized the opportunity to jump as high as possible. Positioning himself midair with the intention of delivering a precise and powerful counterattack to the ferocious creature. The execution of this well coordinated plan brought a sense of relief to Diaku. He found himself astonished once again by Kiyung's exceptional skills in combat. Kiyung submitted to pour all his efforts into the fight against the monster in order for their survival. A determined look in his eyes, Kiyung conveyed the unwavering resolve that survival was paramount. However, their perilous situation escalated as a second monster entered the scene, intensifying the challenge they faced. In a timely twist of fate, another player, appearing well-versed in the intricacies of the other world's system, entered the fray. This mysterious player exuded a sense of professionalism, handling the situation with ease. To Kiyong's surprise, the newcomer swiftly and effortlessly annihilated the second monster with just a single hit. Kiyun, still grappling with the events that transpired, sought to comprehend the swift and efficient actions of the mysterious player who had come to their aid. The newcomer approached them with an aura that resonated strength, exuding a sense of familiarity with the challenges posed by the monsters within the other world. Nonchalant and experienced, the mysterious player seemed accustomed to the rigors of combat against the creatures that roamed the realm. Despite his handsome appearance, the weariness in his eyes hinted at the toll that continuous battles had taken on him. As the mysterious player faced Kiyong, a moment of silent tension hung in the air, none of them taking the initiative to break the silence and initiate a conversation. Intrigued by the enigmatic prowess and aura of the mysterious player, Kiyong found himself compelled to unravel the identity of this skilled individual. Utilizing his mind's eye ability once again, the status window revealed the name of this formidable ally, Kim Hyunsung, who displayed stats painted a picture of remarkable prowess, with most of Hyunsung's attributes ranking either heroic or legendary. Kiyoung's intrigue deepened when he noticed a unique skill in Hyunsung's repertoire, one called Regressor of All Tennis. The unfamiliarity of this skill prompted Kiyoung to speculate that it might involve the manipulation of time. While Kiyoung immersed himself in examining the details of Hyunsung's status window, Diaku, displaying politeness, took the initiative to introduce himself and inquire about Hyunsung's name. Kiyoung reviewed Hyunsung's overall rating and was astounded that the system deemed having someone of Hyunsung's caliber in the team a significant privilege, recognizing his extraordinary talent. The evidence was compelling. Hyunsung's luck stat, standing at level 23, bore the prestigious rank of hero. Kiyoung couldn't deny the invaluable contribution Hyunsung could make in battles, considering his legendary ranked stamina stat, also at level 23. Despite the acknowledgement of Hyunsung's exceptional abilities, a sense of impossibility lingered in Kiyoung's mind because he, lacking such innate talent, found it challenging to fathom how someone like Hyunsung could receive such blessings. As Kiyoung's gaze remained fixed on Hyunsung, he became increasingly convinced that Hyunsung was no newcomer to this perilous game. Hyunsung, curious about the dynamics within the group, turned to Diaku and inquired about Kiyoung, expressing interest in their connection. With unbridled enthusiasm and a touch of pride, Diaku introduced Kiyoung to Hyunsung, wrapping his arms around Kiyoung and boasting of his combat prowess. Intrigued by the revelations, Kiyoung decided to delve into Hyunsung's traits. To his surprise, he discovered that Hyunsung possessed the legendary ranked trait of swordsmanship expertise. This unique skill granted advantages in all actions related to the sword. As the trio continued to interact and get to know each other, Kiyoung found himself grappling with a growing sense of jealousy towards Hyunsung. In contrast, Hyunsung appeared somewhat awkward and remained silent. This led Kiyoung to overthink and keep his guard up, since he couldn't shake the feeling that Hyunsung might have noticed his scrutiny of Hyunsung's stats. Amidst this, Heian, having overcome the trauma of being chased by monsters, tentatively tried to join them. Recognizing Hyunsung's strength, Kiyoung opted to be as amiable as possible, expressing gratitude for the assistance and attempting to foster a positive rapport within the group. Hyunsung revealed to Kiyoung that, at the moment, he was actively gathering survivors in the game and had prepared a camp as a suitable place for them to stay. Intrigued, Kiyoung inquired about the number of people Hyunsung had already gathered. Hyunsung shared that he had gathered around 30 individuals, though he wasn't certain about their combat capabilities, but he expressed his hope that both Diaku and Kiyoung would join him. While Hyunsung extended a kind gesture, Kiyoung, maintaining his guarded stance, couldn't shake the assumption that Hyunsung might be too trusting, possibly making him vulnerable. 
Despite his reservations, Kyung found himself admiring Hyun Sung's unique skill, the regressor of all tennis. Recognizing the potential significance of Hyun Sung's unique trait, the regressor of all tennis, Kyung saw an opportunity for valuable insights or knowledge about the unusual world they found themselves in. Fueled by the desire to navigate the chaotic landscape of the other world, Kyung made a conscious decision to maintain a positive relationship with Hyun Sung and follow his lead in their journey. As Diakgu and Hyun Sung exchanged words about their respective traits, Kyung had a moment of reflection when it dawned on him that he had saved Heian from the pursuing monsters earlier. Observing her lingering shock and isolation in a corner, Kyung extended a comforting hand, hoping to provide solace to Heian in the midst of the unsettling circumstances they all faced. In Heian's eyes, Kyung radiated a comforting aura as he reassured her that he and his companions were there to help. Despite the terrors surrounding them, Kyung's presence provided a sense of comfort to the terrified and delicate Heian, who was delighted to have companions in the midst of the horrors. Hyun Sung, observing Heian standing up, felt a peculiar sense of familiarity, as if he had known her before. Intrigued by this revelation, Hyun Sung was surprised and excited, eager to initiate a conversation with Heian. As Heian introduced herself, it became apparent that she had never met Hyun Sung before. Nevertheless, Hyun Sung displayed the most bright and cheerful smile upon meeting her for the first time. This unexpected enthusiasm from Hyun Sung puzzled Ki Young, who couldn't fathom the reason behind Hyun Sung's sudden cheerfulness. Given Heian's difficulty in trusting others, she sought comfort in Ki Young's presence, clinging to him as she engaged in a conversation with Hyun Sung. While Hyun Sung recognized Heian's emotional struggle, he assured her that she could openly share any concerns or reservations with him. Heian, despite reassurances, still appeared terrified and insisted to Hyun Sung that she was fine. This reaction heightened Ki Young's skepticism as he found Heian's response to be somewhat peculiar when faced with Hyun Sung. Ki Young's thoughts raced with suspicion, considering the possibility that someone as powerful as Hyun Sung might be seeking Heian for a specific reason. He contemplated the idea that Hyun Sung, with his evident capabilities, had witnessed the unfolding events of the world. And in an effort to alter the impending chaos, Ki Young couldn't shake the suspicion that Hyun Sung's interactions were driven by a larger mission, one that involved acquiring everything beneficial for his own objectives. Ki Young, piecing together the clues and recognizing the power that Heian possessed, began to understand that she might be one of the perfect candidates that Hyun Sung was seeking. Heian, trying to lighten the awkward atmosphere, decided to act all cutesy and express her desire to be close to Ki Young. Heian expressed her gratitude for being saved, but acknowledged that it was getting late. Ki Young responded with a cheerful smile, assuring her that saving her wasn't a problem. He made an effort to maintain politeness, hoping to create a comfortable atmosphere for Heian. However, beneath the surface, Ki Young couldn't ignore the realization that he had gained a powerful ally in the form of Heian. Especially when Ki Young recognized the tremendous potential held by Heian, a person with latent magical abilities and Hyun Sung, a seasoned veteran on his second regression. Viewing them as beacons of light in the darkness of this unfamiliar world, Ki Young considered them invaluable allies. The thought of having such powerful individuals in his team brought a grin to his face. And deep down, he harbored the hope that they could stay together until the journey's end. Encountering Hyun Sung and witnessing the camp he had established, Diakgu couldn't contain his positive energy. Upon arriving at the camp, the survivors appeared either engaged in their routines or fatigued and seeking relaxation, but Diaku stood out as the sole individual brimming with positive spirit. Despite the weariness evident among the survivors, Diaku marveled at the fortunate discovery of the campsite by Hyun Sung. While Hyun Sung modestly claimed it was a coincidence, Ki Young couldn't shake the suspicion that Hyun Sung might have known about this location beforehand. As they joined the camp, a charming woman, seemingly an ally of Hyun Sung, greeted his return. With evident happiness, radiating sweetness and care as she inquired about Hyun Sung's journey, Hyun Sung affectionately called the woman Ji Hai, prompting Ki Young's curiosity about the seemingly fond interaction between them. As Hyun Sung explained that Ki Young and his allies would be joining them, Ji Hai expressed surprise at Diakgu's towering stature. Intrigued, Ki Young decided to inspect Ji Hai's status window to assess her worth as an ally. To his surprise, he found that Ji Hai was still a newbie, lacking a title, class, or notable progress. This discovery left Ki Young puzzled, especially considering Ji Hai's informal reference to Hyun Sung as a big brother, 
despite the mere seven-year age gap between them. Kiyoung was taken aback by Jihai's behavior, finding it unusual for someone her age to act a bit childish. His surprise continued when he discovered that Jihai's stats were labeled as common. It made him frustrated when the system suggested that he found his soulmate simply due to both of them being unfortunate. As Jihai inquired about Diaku's name, Kiyoung couldn't help but wonder about the meaning behind her trait, selfish ambitionist. Despite his frustration, Diaku maintained his politeness and introduced himself and Kiyoung. Meanwhile, Heian remained shy and struggled to trust others as she introduced herself. It seemed that Jihai was a bit judgmental, displaying a cold attitude towards Heian for no apparent reason. Kiyoung found it ironic that someone like Jihai was quick to measure people's worth based on superficial traits. He observed that Jihai was friendly towards Diaku, likely due to his strong and imposing physique, which earned him a passing grade in Jihai's eyes. However, Kiyoung sensed that Jihai might be cold towards Han because of her limping leg, making her rely on Kiyoung for assistance in movement, and this situation resulted in a failing grade for both Han and Kiyoung. It appeared that Jihai had her own survival tactics, attempting to get close to the strong ones like Diaku by acting sweet and cute. Diaku's enthusiastic response about Kiyoung's value caught Jihai's attention. She gave Kiyoung a thorough look, reassessing him after Diaku's statement. Surprisingly, Jihai's attitude shifted from being cold to adopting a cutesy and friendly demeanor, seemingly trying to befriend Kiyoung. Jihai took charge, instructing that she would guide them to their respective living spaces with separate accommodations for males and females, thus, Heian will come with Jihai. Jihai then gave Kiyoung a bright smile and expressed her hope that he would take care of Heian. Observing Jihai's behavior, Kiyoung started to see similarities between her personality and his own, like there seemed to be common ground between them. To his surprise, as Kiyoung and his allies entered their living space, they were met with gazes from the other survivors. The survivors seemed genuinely happy to welcome additional fighters, assuming that Kiyoung and his allies would be their protectors. They were all enthusiastic and happy to have another fighter in their living conditions. Kiyoung recognized that Hyunsung indeed had established a safe space, but it is primarily designed for those who couldn't actively participate in fights, not for individuals like Kiyoung and his allies who were more capable. As he contemplated the situation, Kiyoung pondered the possibility of taking a leadership role in future battles, especially since Diaku, while physically strong, seemed to have a softer nature. The next day arrived, and everyone in the camp was doing their best to settle in. As Kiyoung attempted to get some sleep, he was disturbed by a commotion nearby. Upon waking up, he noticed that Hyunsung was checking on Diaku to ensure he slept well in the camp. Seizing the opportunity, Kiyoung took the initiative to discuss an important matter with Hyunsung. Expressing his observation, Kiyoung addressed the fact that the majority of people in the camp didn't seem prepared for combat. Kiyoung inquired about the maintenance of the camp, but Hyunsung honestly admitted that the current situation couldn't be considered good. He highlighted the struggles the majority of survivors were facing due to limited supplies of water and food for 30 people. Hyunsung expressed concern, especially considering the potential growth in the number of survivors they might rescue. Kiyoung concurred, stating that the provisions they brought would soon be depleted. He pointed out the additional challenge that individuals incapable of fighting were contributing to the strain. Hyunsung was taken aback when Kiyoung referred to these non-combatants as baggage. Kiyoung clarified that he and his friends weren't volunteers, underscoring that they were all striving to survive. Diaku, feeling the tension of the conversation about survival. Nervously, he sought clarification if Kiyoung was suggesting they should leave the camp. Kiyoung, however, assured Diaku that he wasn't proposing such an egoistic decision. Instead, Kiyoung emphasized that staying in the camp without making progress wouldn't lead to favorable outcomes. This pragmatic perspective made Hyunsung, who seemed to take the leadership personally, feel a sense of sadness. Acknowledging the practicality of their conversation, Kiyoung made an effort to lighten the atmosphere. Both he and Diaku assured Hyunsung that, despite the challenges, they would continue to give their best in the fight alongside him. This assurance lifted Hyunsung's spirits, grateful to have reliable fighters by his side. In a sincere conversation with Hyunsung, Kiyoung acknowledged that he comprehended Hyunsung's desire for everyone to survive and escape the horrors of the other world together. Despite this understanding, Kiyoung admitted a lack of empathy, acknowledging that he often prioritized his own well-being. 
attempting to bridge the gap, ki -young made an effort to explain that his actions, driven by a focus on survival, might be perceived as selfish. However, to ki -young's surprise, hyun -sung clarified that he fully understood ki -young's practical approach, recognizing that survival often demanded decisions that might be viewed as self-centered. Although ki -young was surprised by hyun -sung's understanding, but the truth lingered beneath the surface since what he really wanted was to ensure that in times of crisis, Hyun Sung wouldn't consider sacrificing him in combat. With a newfound sense of civility and mutual understanding, ki -young decided to abandon veiled intentions and become more straightforward. He saw an opportunity to address a crucial matter regarding Hyun Sung's plans for the future. Without beating around the bush, ki -young proposed that regardless of Hyun Sung's plans, he and his allies were willing to actively participate and contribute. Hyun Sung, taken aback by ki -young's bold proposal, he couldn't help but sport a slight grin as it dawned on him that ki -young, beneath his seemingly self-centered demeanor, possessed wits and a fundamental understanding of the game they found themselves in. Reflecting back to the beginning, ki -young had an epiphany regarding the goddess's instructions and conclude that she had given them two choices. ki -young realized that the options were to either attack and survive, a daunting task, or find an alternative approach. Understanding the limitations of their resources, he suggested that they must minimize their group size, as attacking with limited resources and personnel would be impractical, emphasizing the importance of quality over quantity in their quest for survival. ki -young, recognizing the potential harshness of his proposal, aimed to make Hyun Sung envision that while they might avoid monster attacks, the trade-off could be starvation due to limited resources. Hoping to convey a clearer perspective, ki -young awaited Hyun Sung's response. He clarified that his intention was to ensure everyone comprehended the gravity of the situation. To ki -young's satisfaction, Hyun Sung extended his hand, signaling agreement and a willingness to collaborate on their shared plans. ki -young was delighted that Hyun Sung agreed to his point of view. However, as he gazed at Hyun Sung, he couldn't shake the feeling that Hyun Sung might have changed the way he looked at ki -young. ki -young was aware that Hyun Sung noticed he wasn't gifted with physical strength, but had talent and wits. More specifically, Hyun Sung viewed ki -young as someone akin to an analyst or administrator type of person. Later that night, the three of them ventured into the other world, where active monsters roamed around. In the heat of the other world, Diaku showcased his combat prowess, skillfully wielding a shield, which he transformed into an asset weapon. In the midst of the battle, Diaku called for Hyun Sung's assistance, recognizing the need for their leader's strategic input. Without hesitation, Hyun Sung swiftly joined the fray. He showcased not only leadership, but also remarkable agility and precision. The monster was caught off guard by Hyun Sung's speed and precision. In a single, well-timed strike, Hyun Sung eliminated the creature. Hyun Sung's fierceness radiated as he engaged the monsters with his sword, showcasing not only strength, but also skill in the heat of battle. The unfortunate creatures hardly stood a chance against his relentless assault. The victory was clear, and after the last creature fell, Hyun Sung struck a pose, embodying the strength and prowess of a seasoned warrior. ki -young, observing the display, couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction where his mind's eye skill had proven invaluable once again. Recognizing Hyun Sung's formidable combat abilities, they agreed that he would engage and hold off the approaching monsters while Diaku and ki -young seized the opportunity to gather essential resources. As Diaku diligently gathered provisions, ki -young took a moment to share his observations to Diaku that the starting point area had fewer monsters than he initially anticipated. Pondering this, ki -young speculated that Hyun Sung might have been proactively clearing the area in advance. However, not wanting to reveal the true extent of his abilities, ki -young casually suggested to Diaku that it could be a strategic move on Hyun Sung's part, or perhaps an inherent effect of his character class. Ki Young's mention of character classes triggered a wave of disappointment in Diaku since they hadn't unlocked their classes yet. Observing the shift in Diaku's mood, Ki Young was startled because it was unusual to see the usually upbeat Diaku feeling down about something. Concerned, Ki Young approached him. He assured Diaku that the unlocking of their character classes was just a matter of time and that they would soon gain new abilities and advantages. In an attempt to uplift Diaku's spirits, ki -young humbly downplayed his own contributions, noting that he didn't do much physical work as Hyun Sung handled most of it. However, he emphasized that Diaku's role was invaluable, because if it weren't for Diaku's efforts, their survival would be far from guaranteed. 
Touched by Kiyong's wholesome words, Diaku found his eyes sparkling with appreciation for his thoughtful friend. The moment of camaraderie, however, was abruptly interrupted when a status window materialized in front of them unexpectedly. Both Kiyong and Diaku were taken by surprise, the timing of the appearance seeming rather peculiar. As they stared at the window, Kiyong's character class had finally been unlocked as it presented with the option to choose between becoming a warrior, archer, mage, or a commander. Delight painted Ki Young's expression as he realized that the process of unlocking his class had been quicker than he anticipated. But what intrigued him was the commander class, which is classified as rare. Ki Young eagerly delved into reviewing the details of the character classes he had unlocked. The first one to capture his attention was the warrior class. Typically serving as the tank in a team, Ki Young discovered that he had attained a common rank within this class. Moving on, he explored the archer class, responsible for long-range attacks. Much to his initial excitement, he found that he had acquired a common rank in this class as well. As Kiyong delved into the details of the mage class, responsible for magic uses, he found himself designated with a common rank once again. Despite this, Kiyong maintained a positive perspective, acknowledging that each class could be a great asset in combats, providing unique advantages to the team. However, it was the commander class that truly intrigued Kiyung, classified as a rare rank. This class required a person to be in the front lines and take on a leadership role. While immersed in choosing their character classes, Diaku and Kiyung were so engrossed in their decisions that they didn't notice Hyunsung approaching. Kiyung explained to Hyunsung the details of the character classes he had unlocked in his status window. But when he revealed that he had obtained the rare ranked commander class, Hyun Sung's initial intrigue gave way to an undelighted expression, as if like something about the commander class didn't sit well with him. Skeptical, Ki Young shared his reservations, suggesting that the commander class might be a trap or a trick orchestrated by the system. Ignoring the suspicions that Ki Young and Hyun Sung harbored, Diaku joyfully envisioned Ki Young as a commander, believed that Ki Young was a perfect fit for it. To him, it was a natural fit, as Ki Young's personality from the beginning of the game reflected the traits of an effective leader. Diaku's ambitious vision of Ki Young as a commander encountered a momentary setback when Hyun Sung, practical and grounded, reminded them that certain benefits might only be gained from choosing specific classes. Ki Young, perceptive as ever, sensed that Hyun Sung might be subtly discouraging him from selecting the commander class while Diaku felt a compelling urge to advocate for Ki Young to choose the commander class. Hyun Sung, in his practical approach, suggested that being an archer might suit Ki Young better. Diaku, however, firmly believed that the commander class would bring out Ki Young's great qualities. Amidst the ongoing debate, Ki Young tried to think through his options. The continuous back and forth between Hyun Sung and Diaku made it challenging for him to arrive at a decision. Despite the chaotic discussion, Kiyong remained calm, understanding the significance of the decision at hand. Feeling the tension between his two friends, Kiyong couldn't help but sense the awkwardness in the air as they remained steadfast in their respective stances. Unsure of how to ease the intensity of the debate, Kiyong pondered the best course of action. Rather than getting entangled in the ongoing argument, Kiyong chose to carefully review the details of each character class. As he sought a decision that would be efficient and complement both his strengths and the team's needs, he finally made up his mind. After thorough consideration, Kiyung, without a moment's hesitation, clicked the Yes button to acquire the character class that he believed would best serve the team. The moment Kiyung accepted the class, an ethereal aura enveloped his body as if he were slowly absorbing its power. Hyun Sung and Diaku were surprised that Kiyung already made a decision. Hyun Sung and Diaku rushed forward, their curiosity piqued. Eager to know which class Ki Young had chosen, they exchanged hopeful glances, silently wishing that he had opted for the class they each had advocated for. Diaku and Hyun Sung, their excitement palpable, were eager to learn which class Ki Young had chosen. Ki Young, hesitating for a moment, took note of the intensity of their prior debate. But eventually, he admitted that he had chosen the magician class. A sense of disappointment clouded his expression when he envisioned Ki Young as the team's leader. Respecting Ki Young's decision, Hyun Sung diplomatically inquired about the reasoning behind choosing the magician class. In response to Hyun Sung's respectful inquiry, Ki Young awkwardly explained that his decision was based on following his intuitions. 
Privately, Kyung acknowledged that the archer class didn't align well with his physical capabilities, and while the allure of being a commander was tempting, it offered limited benefits to his stats. Choosing the magician class, Kyung strategically aimed to boost his intelligence stat, recognizing the importance of thorough thinking in their perilous situation. Additionally, the decision granted him a significant increase of three points in his mana, a previously unfamiliar territory for Kiyung, but one that now held substantial merit. Kiyung's wise decision not only expanded his knowledge of basic magic, but also saw a commendable increase in his mana stat by three points. As Kiyung embraced the power surging within him, it felt like intelligence was filling up his brain. Curious about the progress he had made, he summoned his own status window, only to be advised that he needed to work a little harder to earn a title for himself. Undeterred, Kiyong summoned his stats, discovering with surprise that two out of seven were now labeled as heroic rank. Summoning his overview, the system described his progress as somewhat all right, acknowledging the challenges he had faced at the start of the game. However, a note of caution came with the information. The game, in its usual cryptic manner, warned Kiyong not to get his hopes too high as a magician, hinting at potential challenges and limitations that lay ahead. Despite the cautionary notes from his own status window, Kiyoung chose to focus on the brighter side, finding solace in the progress he had made. Shifting his attention to Diakku, who still seemed saddened by the earlier choice, Kiyoung inquired about the class Diakku had picked. Diakku, grappling with the decision between a shieldman and a priest, admitted the difficulty he was facing in making a choice. Almost instinctively, both Hyunsung and Kiyoung, synchronized in their response, suggested that Diaku should choose the Shieldsman class. However, a subtle conflict brewed within Diaku, who harbored a desire to be a priest despite the external suggestions. Hyunsung and Kiyoung, without uttering excessive words, advised Diaku to choose the Shieldsman class. Responding to their synchronized suggestion, Diaku made a swift decision and chose the Shieldsman class without delay. Seeking reassurance, Kiyoung asked Diaku about his chosen class. In response, Diaku offered a genuine and pure smile, expressing contentment with his decision. Embracing the positive energy, Diaku wholeheartedly swore to be a shieldsman from that point onward. Kiyoung, while outwardly expressing satisfaction with Diaku's choice, harbored a deeper sense of relief, knowing that someone would now serve as his meat shield. After a while, Hyunsung congratulated the two of them and suggested returning to the camp. Before heading out, he contemplated dividing the looted food. To his surprise, Hyunsung discovered that Kiyoung and Diaku had managed to loot and gather a substantial amount of food during their venture. Hyunsung's surprise at the abundance of food gathered, Kiyoung simply conveyed that they were more than willing to share the gathered food with others. Hyunsung's eyes sparkled with appreciation upon witnessing Kiyoung's generosity, recognizing the selflessness behind the act despite their differing survival mindsets. Grateful for the gathered food, he hugged the looted bags tightly, expressing his gratitude to Kiyoung and Diaku. Prepared to return to the camp, Hyunsung bowed his head, a gesture of respect and appreciation towards both Diaku and Kiyoung. Upon returning to the survivor's camp, the atmosphere was subdued despite the sunny day, as hunger took its toll on the residents. Eager for Hyunsung's return, one of them inquired about his arrival to Jihai. The person expressing impatience hoped for Hyunsung's swift return, sounding somewhat demanding. In the absence of Hyunsung, Jihai suggested they eat some of the leftovers or whatever remained in their storage to alleviate the hunger. Jihai got distracted as some man approached her. A man approached her with a desperate look, expressing a strong desire for just one bite of the bread she was eating. Moved by compassion, Jihai decided to share, cutting the bread in half to provide some relief. Jihai's act of sharing turned out to be mean and rude, as she only shared half of the bread with the woman she had been talking to. The man, who was already starving, received only crumbs. Despite his desperate hunger, he had no choice but to say thank you, even though Jihai's behavior came across as narcissistic and unkind. To Jihai's surprise, the atmosphere shifted as Hyunsung, Diaku, and Kiyoung made their presence known. The survivors, starving and eager for their return, were genuinely happy to see them with bags filled with looted supplies. Despite her previous behavior, Jihai adopted a two-faced demeanor, acting sweet and cutesy as she approached Hyunsung upon his return. Jihai, with audacity, took the initiative to handle the loots as if she would take charge of them. 
Despite her earlier behavior, Hyun Sung appeared oblivious to Ji Hai's true nature, trusting her with this responsibility. On the other hand, another survivor attempted to approach Ki Young, expressing his intention to take care of the loots in Ki Young's possession. To the survivor's surprise, Ki Young responded with a cold stare, contrary to the warmth and trust usually associated with Hyun Sung. The shock stemmed from the expectation that Ki Young would exhibit similar leadership qualities as Hyun Sung. Diakgu, perplexed by Ki Young's decision not to share the loots, followed him and sought clarification. Ki Young reiterated that they weren't volunteers, expressing concern that sharing too much might result in a bad reputation among the camp residents. Ki Young believed that risking their well being for others was not viable. He speculated that Hyun Sung might have recruited them not just for their skills, but to inspire the camp residents to take a more active role. As Ki Young continued walking, he couldn't help but observe Ji Hai's sudden transformation into a sweet and generous person. Her demeanor had shifted entirely, leaving Ki Young intrigued by the apparent change in her behavior towards the camp residents. With a discerning eye, Ki Young considered the possibility of Ji Hai taking charge in the absence of Hyun Sung. Despite Ji Hai's sweet and appealing facade, Ki Young recognized her as someone who exhibited strength towards the weak and weakness towards the strong. Drawing a parallel to a ruler, Ki Young concluded that Ji Hai acted like a king when Hyun Sung wasn't present, wielding influence and authority in her own way. As Ki Young surveyed the camp, he observed a spectrum of experiences. While some seemed to be enjoying themselves, others were engaged in laborious tasks, creating a stark contrast in the overall atmosphere. Ki Young's attention was drawn to the laborious tasks being carried out in the camp, and to his surprise, he noticed someone familiar among the workers. It was Hayan, diligently involved in stocking up rocks to fortify their camp's defenses. However, Ki Young observed a less than ideal situation for Hayan. Some of the workers appeared to be unkind, criticizing Hayan for what they perceived as sluggish work while carrying rocks. Colleagues warned those involved in the labor that their productivity determined their share of resources, implying that those who worked harder would receive more. Observing Hayan's struggles served as a wake up call for Ki Young. The unfair treatment she received due to her delicate and soft nature prompted Ki Young to take action. Ki Young then calls for Diaku to talk about Hayan. Ki Young inquired if Diaku remembered her as the woman they had saved earlier. Expressing concern for Hayan's well being, Ki Young requested that Diaku give Hayan his loots and watch over her. Diaku, misinterpreting Ki Young's intentions, got the wrong idea that Ki Young might have a romantic interest in Hayan. Despite this misunderstanding, Diaku assumed the role of a supportive friend and promised to fulfill Ki Young's favor. While Diaku made this commitment, Hayan continued to exert herself, working hard in the laborious task assigned to her. Ki Young, observing her efforts, couldn't help but feel a sense of empathy. Understanding that Hayan likely expected him and Diaku to be the ones looking out for her. Ki Young contemplated that if he could make Hayan understand their helpful nature, she might rely on them more for support. Meanwhile, Diaku, maintaining a positive spirit, approached Hayan. To their surprise, as they expected potential bullying or pity towards Hayan, an unexpected individual approached her. Contrary to their concerns, this person displayed genuine kindness, offering his bread to Hayan. He seemed genuine and nice as he handed his bread to her. Ki Young's curiosity was piqued by the kind and generous man who offered his bread to Hayan. However, as he observed this stranger, a sense of caution washed over him. Ki Young found himself consumed by curiosity and a hint of jealousy regarding the kind man who approached Han. The thought that this stranger might take away his perceived precious treasure occupied Ki Young's mind. Skeptical of the man's intentions, Ki Young pondered whether there was more to his seemingly generous act. He held the belief that someone who barely had enough food for themselves and gave it away might have ulterior motives beneath their outward kindness. While Ki Young grappled with these suspicions, Diaku faced his own dilemma. Ki Young, after some contemplation, signaled to Diaku that it was still acceptable to give the loots to Han. Without questioning, Diaku obediently followed Ki Young's directive. Diaku approached Han and her new acquaintance, who had kindly offered her bread. The man explained that the bread was from Jihai, subtly implying a connection with her. He insisted that Han should accept the entire loaf. Han, initially shy and overwhelmed by the unexpected kindness, hesitated to accept the offered bread. However, the kind man insisted, believing that she deserved a reprieve from the challenging tasks she was undertaking. Grateful for the gesture, 
Hayan eventually accepted the bread and expressed her thanks to the man for looking out for her. As she enjoyed every bite, her thoughts turned to Kiyong and Diaku. The memories of being saved by Kiyong lingered in her mind, and she couldn't help but think of him fondly. Kiyong's image dominated her thoughts, and she found herself envisioning his handsome face as she savored the moments of respite provided by the bread. Heian couldn't suppress a blush that crept onto her cheeks as she found herself lost in thoughts of Kiyong. As Heian continued to daydream about Kiyong, it seemed that the kind man harbored a crush on her. He approached the situation cautiously, asking if it was all right for him to be close to her. Heian, still appreciative of his gesture with the bread, agreed, thinking of him as a kind person. However, the atmosphere shifted unexpectedly. The man's initial kindness took a different turn as he caressed Heian's hand, catching her off guard. The situation became more complex as the man suddenly became romantic. Heian asked him kindly to let go of her hands. Heian, perplexed by the sudden shift in the man's behavior, couldn't understand why his kindness had vanished. However, her confusion deepened as the man, disappointed by her rejection, turned mean. Expressing his dissatisfaction, he made Heian feel as though she had done something wrong. Clarifying that he didn't intend to perform acts of charity for her benefit, the man crossed a line. He went on to advise Heian to repay favors or kindness. The man then tightened his grip on Heian's delicate wrists. As the man continued to act out of line, he delivered a message to Heian, suggesting that fitting in required being on his good terms. Unable to tolerate the man's behavior any longer, Diaku decided to intervene. He warned the man that if he didn't want to face consequences, he should release Heian's hand. However, the man, seemingly confident and disrespectful, disregarded Diaku's warning. Faced with the man's rudeness and unwillingness to back down, Diaku felt compelled to take action to protect Heian. Swiftly and decisively, Diaku smacked the man's hand, causing him to release his grip on Heian's delicate wrists. Diaku, asserting his authority, clarified that he hadn't hit the man too hard, but insisted that he needed to stop his inappropriate behavior. Taking matters into his own hands, quite literally, Diaku picked up the man. Heian, taken aback by the sudden turn of events, Diaku ensured that the man was kept at a safe distance, preventing any further harm to her. The commotion caused by Diaku's intervention had grown so loud that it attracted the attention of Jihai and the other survivors in the camp. The noise reverberated, stirring curiosity among the survivors who began to gather, eager to understand the source of the disturbance. Observing the unfolding situation, Kiyong chose to remain a bystander for a while, gauging the extent to which the events would escalate. Meanwhile, the man involved in the disturbance overreacted dramatically. Just because of the nosebleed, it made him appear like a crying baby in the eyes of the onlookers. Heian, attempting to prevent further escalation, intervened and tried to calm Diaku. She reassured him that she was fine, hoping to diffuse the tension and redirect the attention away from the overreacting man. Jihai, aiming to quell the commotion. She tapped in, offering comfort to the man named Siaku. She sternly addressed Diaku, emphasizing that violence was strictly prohibited within the camp. Diaku, standing his ground, explained that he had witnessed Siaku attempting to harass Heian, prompting his intervention. In an attempt to get to the bottom of the situation, Jihai turned her attention to Siaku and inquired about the validity of Diaku's claims, only to be met with denial from Siaku. Siaku skillfully fabricated a narrative, asserting that the hand-grabbing incident was an accidental misunderstanding that Diaku misinterpreted. This manipulation infuriated Diaku, who saw through Siaku's attempt to portray himself as the victim in the situation. Siaku continued, stating that he merely wanted to be close to Heian, emphasizing her positive response to his actions. Jihai, seeking clarity, turned to Heian, scolding her and urging her to speak up about the truth. However, the attention placed on Heian made her feel pressured. Amidst the confusion, the camp inhabitants quickly jumped to conclusions, assuming that the confrontation between Diaku and Siaku was merely a dispute over a girl. The crowd began to judge Heian, labeling her as a flirt in the midst of the predicament. She felt an overwhelming sense of pressure. The accusatory gazes and hasty assumptions made her teary-eyed, especially considering that she hadn't done anything wrong. The harsh scrutiny made her question whether the other world was any different from the judgment she faced on Earth, where it seemed like no one was on her side. Overwhelmed, Heian couldn't contain her emotions any longer and began to cry. In an attempt to alleviate the tension, she reluctantly admitted that what Siaku said was true, 
even though the truth was far more complex. Despite Heian's emotional struggle, she bravely detailed Siakwu's actions, expressing the fear they had instilled in her. However, as the pressure mounted, Jihai appeared unwilling to comprehend Heian's perspective. Instead of trying to see the wider view, Jihai sighed in apparent frustration. In a turn of events, Jihai placed the blame squarely on Heian, emphasizing that she was in the wrong for agreeing to be close with Siakwu. Heian, desperate to explain her innocence and lack of understanding regarding Siakwu's true intentions, attempted to justify her actions. However, Jihai, lacking empathy, questioned whether Heian was a child, dismissing her tears as ineffective in solving the situation. Jihai continued to assert her authority, calling out Diaku for resorting to violence, emphasizing that saving a girl doesn't justify breaking the rules prohibiting violence in the camp. Despite Heian's plea for the situation to stop and her sincere apology, she was filled with pride as Jihai openly sided with Siaku. Jihai, unmoved by the distress she caused Heian, insisted that apologizing to her wouldn't resolve anything. However, her biased perspective became evident as she pressured Heian to apologize to Siakwu, portraying him as the victim. Heian, shocked by the unjust demand, found herself in a dilemma. Jihai was waiting for Heian to apologize and beg as if like she's pressuring her. He pressure from Jihai weighed heavily on her, leaving her trembling with fear while Diaku, witnessing this unfair treatment, grew increasingly disgusted. Heian couldn't get the words out of her mouth, especially when she's not even at the wrong. Kiyong, observing the escalating tension and unfair treatment, decided it was time to step in. With confidence, Kiyong walked into the center of the commotion and approached Han. People's eyes were fized on him as he confidently walked in. Kiyong took charge, determined to address the situation due to the unfair judgment unfolding. As the center of attention, Kiyong, flanked by Han and the others, found himself unexpectedly surrounded by intrigued onlookers. Though he knew the unfolding situation had nothing to do with him, he couldn't ignore the fact that Heian was unjustly cornered. Jihai, confident that Kiyong would align with her, was taken aback when Kiyong dismissed her, stating unequivocally that she had lost her mind. In no uncertain terms, Kiyong scolded Jihai, emphasizing that the camp was not a playground for her power games. Kiyong, not content with just scolding Jihai, extended his warning to the entire camp cautioning them about the potential danger of attracting monsters with their loud voices. The realization prompted the camp members to become more conscious, lowering their voices to avoid drawing unwanted attention. In an attempt to salvage her position, Jihai started to explain the situation, but Ki Young, already aware of the events, cut her off. He highlighted Jihai's own words about not knowing the true nature of the conflict, emphasizing that the roles of victim and assailant had yet to be determined. Kiyong's boldness in pointing out the unfair judgment resonated through the camp, leaving Jihai in shock and Heian visibly terrified. Jihai, trying to save face, attempted to justify her actions. Blaming Heian, however, Kiyong interrupted her again, asking a crucial question that whether she was absolutely certain of Siakwu's innocence. Caught in her own deception, Jihai stood speechless and visibly ashamed as Kiyong skillfully exposed her complicity in Siakwu's guilt. Kiyong, sensing his triumph, knew that Jihai's confirmation of Siakwu's innocence would ultimately place the responsibility squarely on her shoulders. Seizing the moment, Kiyong emphasized the unpleasantness of ganging up on a single person, warning that such actions would undoubtedly disappoint Hyunsung, who held a higher authority in the camp. The onlookers, now feeling the weight of their actions, shared in Jihai's shame, realizing the potential consequences if Hyunsung were to discover the truth. Turning his attention to the distraught Heian, Kiyong approached her with a reassuring demeanor. As he consoled her, he couldn't help but feel certain that, in his eyes, Heian was not capable of leading men astray. Touched once again by Kiyong's unwavering support, Heian found solace in his defense amid the growing opposition. Jihai, unwilling to concede defeat, challenged Kiyong's assurance in Heian's innocence, questioning their short acquaintance. In response, Kiyong painted a vivid scenario. Drawing a parallel between meeting someone in school and seeking friendship, he emphasized that camaraderie didn't equate to ill intentions or the right to be malicious. Jihai, frustrated and silenced by Kiyong's reasoning, couldn't deny the logic that befriending someone shouldn't be grounds for victim blaming. Initially aligned against Han, the collective sentiment turned against Jihai, now seen as unjustly accusing Han for merely being friendly. 
Kiyung's perspective resonated, prompting a broader understanding among the camp members. As the tables turned against her, Jihai began to feel the weight of the pressure she had so readily applied to Heian. Desperate to salvage her position, Jihai turned to Kiyoung in an attempt to talk her way out of the escalating situation. To her shock, she found herself trapped, realizing that there was no easy escape from the predicament she had created. As her gaze met Kiyoung's, the power dynamic shifted, and Jihai felt a profound sense of powerlessness. Kiyoung's assertiveness and the camp's collective disapproval had stripped Jihai of the control she once wielded. A silent acknowledgement passed between Kiyoung and Jihai a recognition that the imagined throne of authority in the camp had shifted. The once untouchable controller found herself far from the position of control she had grown accustomed to, realizing that her reign had come to an abrupt end. Jihai remained silent, humbled by the broader perspective that Ki Young had presented, exposing the true wrongdoings. Heian, overwhelmed with gratitude, sought to express her thanks, but Ki Young redirected the attention. He prioritized Siakwu's well-being, instructing the crowd to ensure he received necessary treatment. Surprisingly, the first volunteers were from Jihai's own followers, indicating a subtle shift in allegiance. Kiyong then emphasized the importance of cleaning up before Hyunsung's arrival and assigned Diakwu the task of patrolling, highlighting the potential dangers posed by people, not just monsters. Diaku, exuding positivity, accepted the responsibility with enthusiasm, ready to contribute to the camp's well-being. With the immediate crisis settled, Kiyoung requested a private meeting with Haiyan. She agreed without hesitation, appreciative of Kiyoung's support in the tumultuous situation. Although the camp was now aware of Siakwu's true nature, some continued to criticize Haiyan, but despite this, Kiyoung hoped that the judgments wouldn't affect her, knowing she was someone special to him. As the camp settled into an uneasy peace, Jihai, left powerless, pondered on how she could reclaim her lost influence. In a quieter moment, Kiyoung led Heian to a more secluded space for their conversation. Showing respect, he gestured for her to sit, signaling the beginning of a private discussion. Shy and apologetic, Heian approached Kiyoung, worried that she might have burdened him with the recent events. Kiyoung, however, reassured her, making it clear that he didn't place any blame on her, but he simply wanted to hear her perspective without any pressure. Kiyoung's approach eased Heian's anxiety, and a spark returned to her eyes as she felt a renewed sense of safety. Wiping away her tears, she steeled herself to share the full details with Kiyoung. Though hesitant at first, the comfort she felt in Kiyoung's presence allowed her to open up. Taking a seat, Heian began to recount the events involving Siakwu. As Heian began to share her experience, Kiyoung listened attentively, adopting a gentle demeanor. Heian, recounting the distressing incident with Siakwu, described how he had forcibly held her and berated her. Sympathizing with her pain, Kiyoung aimed to validate her feelings. However, Heian's emotions ran deep, making it challenging for Kiyoung to fully comprehend the extent of her turmoil. The nuances in her speech made it a bit difficult for him to grasp the entirety of her emotions. Despite this, Kiyoung recognized the importance of empathy in this situation. As Heian continued to share her story, the comfort she felt in speaking to Kiyoung allowed her to release the pent-up emotions. Grateful for Kiyoung's support, Heian extended her thanks, but Kiyoung, ever humble, clarified that he was merely attempting to provide a broader perspective on the situation. However, Heian, appreciative of Kiyoung's belief in her, emphasized that his trust meant a great deal to her. As Heian reflected on the various instances of kindness she had received from Kiyoung since their meeting, she couldn't help but wonder about his motivation. Kiyoung, opening up a bit about himself, admitted that he did what he believed was right. He revealed a personal connection to the situation, sharing that he had a younger sister in the real world around the same age as Heian. While acknowledging the contrast in personalities between Heian and his own chaotic younger sister, Kiyoung expressed genuine empathy towards Heian. Curious about Heian's life beyond the other world, Kiyoung inquired about her situation in the real world, in which Heian revealed the distressing fact that she had lost contact with her two older sisters. As the conversation delved into more personal territory, Kiyoung asked about Heian's parents, and she disclosed that they were also absent in the real world. Seizing the moment, Kiyoung opened up, acknowledging the similarities in their situations. As Heian blushed at the realization of their shared experiences, Kiyoung was satisfied to have a connection with her. But deep down, he thought of this as a perfect timing to empathize with her. Recognizing the opportunity to deepen their connection, Kiyoung suggested that they talk more comfortably. 
As Keung suggested they talk more comfortably, acute panic swept over Heian, realizing that her crush was actively seeking to know her better. Her shyness grew more pronounced in Keung's presence. Keung, seemingly satisfied with the impact he had on Heian, he then summoned his mind's eye to check her recent stats. To his discovery, Heian hadn't chosen a character class yet, unlike Diaku and himself. Despite her lack of confidence, the system hinted at Heian's latent potential, indicating a capability for a formidable mage level. With the newfound knowledge about Heian's potential as a mage, Kiyoung contemplated the idea of training her to become the best in that class, however. He wondered if he should initiate a conversation with her about magic. As they engaged in conversation, Jihai interrupted by knocking, drawing Kiyoung's attention. Instantly, he became serious, detecting her presence, and inquired about her intentions. Surprised by Jihai's sudden intrusion, Kiyoung and Heian exchanged glances. Kiyoung, caught off guard, hadn't anticipated Jihai's approach to be so swift. Recognizing the need for privacy, Kiyoung gently asked Heian to step aside momentarily. Heian, looking uncomfortable, complied, awkwardly passing through. While Jihai couldn't help but notice the unease in Heian's demeanor. Alone now, Kiyoung, wanting to assert control over the situation, put on a fierce expression and questioned Jihai about her intentions. Unable to maintain eye contact, Jihai apologized for causing a disturbance. Kiyoung, taking a mature stance, apologized as well for any perceived sensitivity on his part. However, Jihai, perceiving Kiyoung's actions as the right thing to do, indicated that she believed his actions were justified. Despite the apologies, it was clear that Jihai desired further conversation and made Kiyoung thought that she might not be aligning with the established dynamics, wondered about her intentions. Jihai then requested to handle the situation between Heian and Siakwu, expressing her remorse for the turmoil caused. Jihai appeared reluctant to relinquish her leadership. Kiyoung, perhaps realizing that overstepping his bounds, let Jihai take charge, acknowledging her role in the camp. Jihai, sensing the gravity of the situation, wanted to clarify that her intentions weren't what Kiyoung might have assumed. Kiyoung, maintaining an intimidating demeanor, warned Jihai that he preferred not to be involved in such matters as he did earlier. As Kiyoung's gaze remained fixed on Jihai, he reflected on the similarity between them that two seemingly untalented individuals forced into the political dynamics of the camp for survival. He hoped that Jihai wouldn't overstep the boundaries he had just set, but then he was surprised as Jihai suddenly stood up. However, instead of asserting herself, she unexpectedly sat down next to him. Softly holding Kiyoung's arms, Jihai promised that she wouldn't cross the line again, expressing regret for causing him trouble. It appears that Jihai and Kiyoung clicked in terms of their own survival mindset. The unexpected turn of events had Kiyoung feeling heated and uncertain, struggling to read Jihai's true intentions. However, the tension dissipated as Jihai revealed that she admired ambitious people. She confessed her fondness for Kiyoung and expressed her hope for a positive relationship between them. Jihai acknowledged that Kiyoung's actions might have been driven by a desire to impress Heian. In return, Jihai promised to look after Heian, recognizing the challenges she faced within the camp due to the dislike from some members. Jihai's candid words brought a smile to Kiyoung's face, creating an unexpected connection between the two. The surprising connection between Kiyoung and Jihai deepened as they confessed their similarities and shared mindsets. In a moment of unexpected intimacy, they shared a kiss and Kiyoung realized that the system had been accurate when it hinted that Jihai was his soulmate. In the aftermath of the turmoil, the camp organized a stage where Siakwu was required to kneel and offer a loud, clear apology for his reprehensible actions. The sincerity in his voice resonated as he expressed his deepest remorse to everyone particularly to Heian. However, as the crowd absorbed the apology, rumors began to circulate. Whispers suggested that Jihai's alignment with Kiyoung might be the reason behind Siakwu's public apology and that Kiyoung's influence had grown. The rumor mill also churned out discussions about Kiyoung's apparent concern for Heian, leading to assumptions of higher authority attributed to him. Despite the public display of Siakwu's apology, skepticism lingered in some quarters, some doubted Heian's innocence, speculating that she might be feigning her soft and innocent demeanor for attention. In the midst of these swirling rumors, Kiyoung chose to remain silent, observing the unfolding dynamics within the camp. Jihai got nervous that she laughed, awkwardly being addressed as the big sis. 
In the present, Ki-young reflected on his decision to align with Ji-hai, recognizing her proficiency in navigating the political landscape of the camp. However, this newfound alliance came with its own set of challenges, including having to listen to Heian's complaints about various circumstances throughout the day. Heian, on the other hand, felt a sense of relief in sharing her grievances with Ki-young, finding solace in expressing the negativity that had accumulated within her. Despite the challenges, Ki-young appreciated the opportunity to learn and grow together, realizing that it was the best way to foster closeness. After Heian had vented, Ki-young shifted the conversation, inquiring about her progress in using basic magic. Ki-young, eager to teach Heian, demonstrated the use of basic magic by pointing his finger. As he summoned a tiny fire on the tip of his finger, Heian was visibly impressed. Her face lit up with happiness at witnessing Ki-young's magical prowess. However, behind the scenes, Ki-young was also occupied with his own magical training, working alongside Diaku and his shieldsmen to enhance their abilities for battles. He advised Heian on the importance of imagination and chanting while casting spells, emphasizing that these aspects were crucial for mages to enhance attribute magic. Despite his demonstration, Ki-young acknowledged the mediocrity of his own magic skills, that's why he hoped that Heian would surpass him. Ki-young informed her about the upcoming hunting trip with Hyunsing and Diakgu, expressing his hope that they would continue practicing. Heian, filled with positivity and determination, promised to do her best in training. After the consultation, Ki-young decided to call it a day. Before he could leave, Heian approached him, seeking further guidance on something she still couldn't understand. Ki-young, happy to assist, listened as Heian shared that her mana had recently increased. Intrigued by her progress, Ki-young, while looking at Heian, contemplated using his mind's eye to gauge her development, considering that she might soon be able to choose her own character class. Excitement filled Ki-young as he used his mind's eye to examine Heian's progress through her status window. To his surprise, Heian now had a class and a disposition of pure advocate, but the system, however, advised her to work hard to gain her own title. Ki-young, reading through Heian's status window, felt a sense of confusion. His gaze fixated on Heian's class, a mage, which was ranked as common. His surprise heightened as he delved further into the overview of Heian's status window, which indicated that she had acquired a perfect understanding of foundations and basic knowledge regarding magic and mana. Ki-young was astonished to realize that Heian had already achieved the status of a mage, challenging his previous assumptions about her learning progress. He couldn't reconcile the image of the sweet and innocent girl with the fact that she seemed to have lied about her magical abilities. Heian, who had always radiated sincerity, straightforwardly informed Ki-young that she didn't know how to use her mana yet. However, Ki-young, aware of the information he had gleaned from her status window, realized that her statement was a lie. Ki-young's gaze lingered on Heian, trying to reconcile the innocent and kind image he held of her with the newfound knowledge that she was capable of lying. Heian, perceptive to Ki-young's prolonged stare, prompted him to explain himself nervously, and he quickly brushed it off, claiming he was lost and thought about something else. Despite knowing that Heian was already proficient in using her mana, Ki-young chose to go along with her pretense, maintaining the facade that he was genuinely willing to teach her. As he looked at Heian's status window, he was surprised to find that the system labeled her class as a mage with a heroic rank, which made him wonder why Heian would pretend to struggle with understanding her own mana. While Ki-young played along, he couldn't help but ponder the reasons behind Heian's charade and what her true plans might be. Ki-young took the initiative to teach Heian how to summon a flame through the tip of her finger. To his surprise, after just one instruction, Heian managed to summon a tiny flame effortlessly. However, her next move, she pretended as if like she couldn't hold the flame for much longer. This left Ki-young in with disbelief, knowing that Heian could definitely pull off some magic. Heian, feigning vulnerability, acted as if she didn't grasp Ki-young's teaching, though Ki-young was convinced she did it intentionally. Heian, eager to learn more, asked Ki-young for further instruction, however, Ki-young, having other commitments, decided to conclude their training session for the time being. Despite this, they compromised on resuming their training the next day, until Ji-hai's underling interfered with their session. This underling was revealed to be Park Hai Young. She is Jihai's lackey as well as the connection Jihai sent after the incident with Siakwu. Ki Young had noticed Hai Young frequently around after the incident with Siakwu, but he couldn't fathom why she was summoning him now. 
To provide some privacy, Ki Young bid farewell to Heian, intending to address whatever matter Hai Young had brought to his attention. Filled with joy, Heian expressed gratitude for Ki Young's assurance that they would resume their training together on another day. Observing Heian as she walked away, Hai Young couldn't help but notice a hint of insecurity in her demeanor, possibly due to her association with people connected to Jihai. As Ki Young questioned Hai Young about the sudden conversation, she hesitated to cut to the chase. Instead, she inquired about the members Ki Young planned to announce for the upcoming hunting trip. Hai Young then expressed her desire to be included in the expedition, wondering if it wasn't too late. However, before Ki Young could approve her request, he decided to analyze Hai Young's potential contribution and assess whether she could be an asset in the next hunting trip. Ki Young, analyzing Hai Young's stats, was impressed to find that her constitution stat was ranked rare, while her strength stat was even higher, ranked heroic despite not having a class. When Ki Young straightforwardly informed Hai Young that he might consider recommending Heian first, Hai Young asserted her belief that those chosen for the hunting trip should be capable fighters. She exuded confidence, convinced that she was more suitable than Heian, although Ki Young, in his mind, disagreed, recognizing Heian's untapped potential. Considering asking Hyun Sung instead, Hai Young sought advice from Ki Young, however, Ki Young cautioned her not to get her hopes up hinting at the challenges she might face in convincing the camp leader. After some deliberation, Jihai, Hyunsung, Kiyung, and Diaku gathered in front of the camp to make a special announcement about who would participate in the upcoming hunting trip. As Jihai called for Hyunsung to make the announcement, an air of intrigue filled the camp, and murmurs began to circulate among the crowd. Hyunsung, taking the stage, delivered a speech emphasizing the challenges posed by the system and the necessity for willing survivors to participate in the upcoming hunting trip. Even before the official announcement, rumors circulated among the crowd, speculating that Heian would likely be included due to her rumored status as Ki Young's favorite, perceived by some as unfair. In the face of judgmental words from others, Heian chose to cover her ears, seeking solace and thoughts of her crush, Ki Young. In those moments, she felt a sense of assurance that ki was the only person she could truly rely on within the camp, providing her with a source of comfort. Deep down, Heian grappled with a sense of guilt for lying to ki however, she believed that revealing the truth could strengthen their connection, prompting her to consider coming clean about her abilities. Taking some alone time during the announcement, it was in this reflective moment that she unexpectedly crossed paths with hai Young, which startled the both of them. Observing Heian's behavior, Hai Young called her out, sensing that she was waiting for Ki Young. Assuming a hint of jealousy, Hai Young couldn't resist being straightforward, suggesting that Heian sometimes pretends to be clueless. Teasingly, Hai Young remarked on how obvious it was that Heian had feelings for Ki Young. As Hai Young took a closer step, Heian became numb, feeling a sense of discomfort. The tension heightened as Hai Young questioned the possibility of Ki Young reciprocating Heian's feelings, leaving Heian with a sense of unease. In response to Heian's inquiry about her behavior, Hai Young explained that she wanted to ensure Heian wasn't being delusional, especially since they would be on the same team for the upcoming hunting trip. Offering a word of advice, Hai Young claimed to understand the type of person Ki Young was. Straight to the point. Hai Young expressed her belief that Ki Young was the type of person who doesn't trust easily. Once Ki Young no longer found convenience in someone, he would discard them without hesitation. Heian, feeling anxious, resisted believing Hai Young's words. Hai Young, perceiving Heian's vulnerability as a potential point of manipulation, warned her that Ki Young might eventually tire of someone like her and cast her aside. Getting personal, Hai Young speculated that perhaps all the nice people in Heian's life had left her, leading her to cling to Ki Young, who had been kind to her. This statement triggered vivid memories for Heian, recalling her two older sisters who had criticized her for depending on them too much. Hai Young seemed determined to push Heian to her limits, suggesting that unless she gave her best effort, Ki Young might lose interest. Hai Young insinuated that people like her were more suited to be on Ki Young's team than someone like Heian. The tension escalated until Hyun Sung announced the first two members of the hunting trip, revealing that Hai Young and Han were selected. Hai Young expressed delight at being chosen. Busy with her own agenda, Hai Young decided to walk away, leaving Han alone to grapple with the unsettling conversation they had. As Hai Young disappeared from view, Han found it challenging to shake off the impact of Hai Young's real talk. 
Struggling to process the conflicting thoughts, Heian faced a dilemma of whether to believe Hai Young's warnings about Ki Young's nature. Despite the doubts planted by Hai Young, Heian clung to her belief that Ki Young was a kind man. Recalling the promises Ki Young had made to her about hunting and practicing their skills together every day, Heian chose to hold on to the image of Ki Young as a trustworthy companion. Despite Hai Young's warnings, Heian was confident in her perception of Ki Young as an understanding man who considered her part of his family. In her eyes, Ki Young was different from the person Hai Young had described. Heian believed that Ki Young valued her despite her perceived lack of wisdom and speed. As Hai Young was called upon to join the stage and be welcomed as part of the hunting team, Heian dismissed every negative word Hai Young had uttered as lies. In her unwavering faith, Heian looked forward to proving Hai Young wrong and strengthening her bond with Ki Young. Despite her outward resolve, deep down, Heian harbored a fear of being cast aside. The unsettling conversation with Hai Young had triggered a cascade of thoughts, leading Heian to entertain the possibility that Ki Young might harbor negative feelings towards her. In the midst of these anxious thoughts, Heian began to experience hallucinations, hearing imaginary negative words suggesting that Ki Young might hate her. The internal struggle intensified as Heian fought against these hallucinations, realizing the emotional toll they were taking on her. The mixture of jealousy and overthinking further complicated Heian's state of mind, creating a turbulent internal landscape as she grappled with her fears and insecurities. The sight of Ki Young shaking hands with Hai Young felt like a breaking point for Heian. The weight of Hai Young's words, especially the assertion that she was better suited for Ki Young, overwhelmed Heian. In that moment, it seemed like Haiyan's world was crumbling around her. A few minutes earlier, before the emotional turmoil reached its peak for Haiyan, Hyun Sung had taken the stage to address the camp about the challenges they faced. He highlighted the scarcity of resources, particularly food and water, in comparison to the growing number of survivors. To tackle this issue, Hyun Sung suggested that some survivors must undergo training outside the camp. Following Hyun Sung's speech, he called upon Ki Young to continue addressing the camp. Ki Young, showcasing his proficiency as a mage, summoned a flame through the palm of his hands. He surprised the audience with his abilities. Seizing the attention, Ki Young explained that the other world they now inhabited operated in a manner far more fantastical than their familiar Earth, resembling the dynamics of a video game. Despite acquiring some skills, Ki Young remained humble, acknowledging that he, like many others, began as a fearful beginner hiding from monsters. Sharing his experience, Ki Young advised the survivors that facing fear head on and fighting without hesitation would lead to strength and eventual triumph. He stressed the importance of everyone working hard together to escape and survive in the other world. Ki Young's motivational speech resonated with the camp, sparking enthusiasm and a collective determination to face the challenges ahead. Even Hyun Sung, surprised by the positive reception, acknowledged that the camp's reaction to Ki Young's words was preferable to the grim alternative of starving to demise. After Ki Young's inspiring speech, Hyun Sung announced Hai Young and Heian as the chosen members for the upcoming hunting trip. The crowd erupted in cheers as Hai Young made her way to the stage. As she extended her hand, hoping for good cooperation in the team, Ki Young tightly held Hai Young. In a subtle move, Ki Young took a closer step, conveying a message discreetly. Hai Young couldn't help but feel a shiver down her spine as Ki Young confronted her about shoving Hai The confidence she once exuded wavered as she stood close to Ki Young, who emitted an aura of intensity. Ki Young acknowledged the incident, but made it clear that this was just a cautionary measure and that such behavior wouldn't be tolerated. Ki Young gave her a glare, a stare that indicated how serious he was if ever Hai Young tried to bully Hai again. His glare bore into Hai Young, leaving her unable to meet his gaze directly, and she sensed the seriousness behind his words. After the serious warning, Ki Young's mood suddenly shifted, becoming more upbeat as he expressed hope for a successful collaboration. As Hai Young walked away, visibly affected by the encounter, Ki Young's mind was filled with thoughts about saving Heian from bullies and growing closer to her. However, as he scanned the crowd for Heian, Ki Young was surprised to find her, as she looked so gloomy and unpleased during the positive ceremony. A closer look revealed the toll of negative words on Heian, suggesting that she might be on the verge of breaking down from the emotional weight she carried. Ki Young, despite being known for his intelligence, found himself feeling intimidated by the unexpected demeanor of the usually sweet and kind Han. 
This unfamiliar sense of intimidation left him unable to comprehend its origin, and his gaze remained fixated on Hayan. Diaku, noticing Kiyong's discomfort, approached him with concern and suggested that Kiyong should focus on taking care of himself. He expressed his worry that Kiyong might be feeling unwell, perhaps due to the food they had consumed earlier. As Kiyong glanced back at Hayan, he noticed her calm demeanor as she waved at him from the stage. Kiyong, feeling a sense of unease and confusion, awkwardly waved back, however, he couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss with Hayan. Meanwhile, Hai Young, still shaken from Ki Young's warning, couldn't escape the nagging feeling that she had messed something up. The image of Ki Young cautioning her against bullying Hayan lingered in her mind, making her nervous. She realized that Ki Young's perceptiveness could pose a challenge, and she wondered how her actions might have affected her standing with him. Hai Young, struggling with the weight of her mistake and the potential consequences, found herself contemplating the consequences of a single misstep. She had worked hard to secure her position, leveraging her connection with Jihai. She even avoided laborious tasks by becoming one of her underlings. As she snaps back to reality, her attention was called by Jihai. Jihai, once the undisputed leader, now advised Hai Young to excel in the upcoming hunting trip and take good care of Ki Young. This unexpected submission to Ki Young's influence left Hai Young unsettled, realizing that the dynamics within the camp were evolving and the roles were shifting in ways she hadn't anticipated. Hai Young, recognizing the importance of connections and alliances in their challenging situation, acknowledged Ji Hai's advice about having reliable people around. However, she was keenly aware that her recent misstep with Ki Young had put her in an unfavorable position. Watching Ki Young being comforted by Hyun Sung and Diaku. Hai Young realized that he was not someone to be underestimated. Despite her dislike for Hayan, Hai Young decided to set aside her pride since she needed to mend her relationship with Ki Young. Hai Young knew she had to adapt to the changing landscape to secure her place. With a newfound determination, Hai Young resolved to do whatever it took to earn Ki Young's favor. The next day marked the commencement of the hunting trip, with Hyung Sung and Diaku positioned at the vanguard. Hyung Sung, assuming the role of the leader, directed Ki Young and Hayan to support from the rear emphasizing the importance of their roles in the impending battle. In addition, he urged Hai Young and Hayan to be vigilant, acknowledging that it was their first battle, and he also hoped that Diaku and Ki Young would also be present at assisting the two. As Hyung Sung conveyed the instructions, Hayan attentively absorbed every word. Meanwhile, Ki Young found his attention divided. Although Hyung Sung's voice faded into the background, Ki Young's gaze remained fixated on Hayan. Kyung found himself questioning whether he was imagining things or simply overanalyzing Hayan's behavior, especially after witnessing her express anger for the first time. His prolonged gaze caught her attention. Hayan immediately shot him the sweetest smile. Caught off guard, Kyung, unsure of Hayan's intentions, decided to maintain a guarded demeanor. Meanwhile, Hai Young, determined to prove herself as a valuable subordinate to Kyung, observed the dynamics unfolding within the group. After all the instructions were provided, Hyung Sung turned to face the entrance of the designated location for their hunting trip. With a final conclusion, he declared that it was time to depart. As they pressed forward, Ki Young found himself taken aback by the intensity of the journey that unfolded before them. Upon their entrance, a diverse array of monsters awaited, poised to counter the group. Hyun Sung wasted no time and initiated the offensive, swiftly engaging some of the creatures. Diaku and Kiyung followed suit, their combined efforts aimed at neutralizing the immediate threat. As the trio showcased their combat prowess, Hai Young, a novice in battle, struggled to conceal her nervousness. Kiyung, wielding his spear with unwavering determination, poured all his might into the fight. However, unlike Hai Young, whose fear was palpable, Hayan watched in awe as Kiyung displayed a newfound level of bravery and masculinity in combat. The aftermath of the intense battle left a field of defeated monsters, courtesy of the formidable trio. However, Diaku couldn't shake off his curiosity about the abundance of smaller monsters, but Hyung Sung, ever cautious, urged him to maintain his vigilance. As Diaku began to ease his guard, a well-timed warning shattered his sense of relief. He turned swiftly, only to face a colossal monster, prepared to unleash its wrath upon them. With instinctive speed, Diaku drew his shield, positioning himself as the frontline defender against the looming threat. Summoning all his might as a shieldsman, Diaku squared off against the gigantic monster. 
The colossal monster, initially surprised by the audacity of this seemingly insignificant human, found itself immobilized under the unexpected strength of Diaku. In its desperate state, all the creature could muster was a resounding roar that echoed through the other world. Sensing the impending struggle, Diaku urgently called for reinforcements, realizing that he couldn't maintain his hold on the massive monster for much longer. Amidst the crisis, Kiyung, always strategic, saw an opportunity for the newcomers to gain valuable combat experience. He beckoned Hai Young to join the fray with her spear. The once so overly confident Hai Young trembles in fear to do the task, but she has no choice because this is the way to impress Kiyung. As Hai Young mustered her strength, the monster glared at her with an intimidating gaze. As the critical moment unfolded, Hai Young succumbed to her fears, frozen in place rather than showcasing the toughness she once projected. Kiyong was deeply disappointed, but he recognized the urgency of the situation and approached her, understanding that their survival depended on swift action. Kiyong took Hai Young's trembling hand, guiding her to properly wield the spear. While Kiyong hoped for Hai Young's growth, he issued a stern warning. He made it clear that if she reverted to such paralyzing fear again, she's a goner. For Hai Young, this encounter marked another unfortunate impression on Ki Young as tears welled up in her eyes. Ki Young took it upon himself to guide Hai Young, teaching her to channel all her strength into her arms. With Ki Young's assistance, they managed to execute a coordinated strike, piercing the ferocious monster in an instant. As Hai Young panicked at the monster's continued presence, Ki Young offered calm guidance, advising her not to lose her grip on the spear. He encouraged her to visualize the monster as mere meat, a tactic to enhance her focus and execution. With Kiyun's steady support, the monster's threat was finally annihilated. The once imposing creature stumbled to the ground without a second to spare. Overwhelmed by the intensity of her first battle experience, Hai Young found herself kneeling on the ground. She catches her breath as the adrenaline slowly subsides. Kiyung, patient and observant, waited for her to calm down, allowing her a moment to recover from the rigorous encounter. While extending assistance to Hai Young during the battle, Kiyung vowed that it would be the last time he offered such aid. He made it clear that the self-reliance during hunting trips, emphasizing that dependence on others could prove detrimental in their survival, however he acknowledged that, for today, he would let the reliance slide as part of the newbie's training for adaptation. With a stern expression, Kiyung reiterated that in the face of future challenges, they would be solely responsible for their own actions. Hai Young vividly remembered her previous taunts towards Han, predicting that Kiyung would eliminate those deemed a disadvantage, but now she realized that those words seemed to be aimed at her. Hai Young felt like she's just digging her own grave since she kept disappointing Kiyung. As Kiyung approached Hai Young and gently tapped her shoulders, it was a conflicting moment for her. Hai Young couldn't stop being nervous around Ki Young, knowing that she might be ousted if she kept messing up. Observing the interaction, Hain couldn't help but keep her eyes fixed on Ki Young. Hain began to show her intimidating stare out of jealousy. As a respite from their arduous journey, the group of five decided to take a break, kindling a fire for warmth. Hain and Hyun Sung took on the responsibility of standing guard, ensuring the safety of the group, while the rest indulged in a much needed nap. After a considerable time on guard duty, Hyun Sung, displaying remarkable stamina, suggested that Diaku take over for Heian so she could get some rest. Diaku acknowledged Hyun Sung's endurance, a compliment underscoring the leader's commitment to the group's well-being. While the others recharged their energy, Ki Young found it challenging to relax. Despite the heaviness of his eyelids, an intense restlessness prevented him from succumbing to sleep. The looming thoughts of the aftermath of their hunting trip weighed on him. He pondered the paths he would need to traverse to ensure his survival once the hunt concluded. He questions about the mysterious continent. He also wondered the nature of the other world nagged at him, and the he wondered what happened to Earth. In the midst of his contemplation, Ki Young's curiosity fixated on Hyun Sung being a regressor, leading Ki Young to wonder about the extent of Hyun Sung's knowledge about the other world. As Ki Young's mind remained captivated by the mystery that shrouded Hyun Sung, a relentless curiosity drove him to ponder the events of Hyun Sung's past that led to his journey as a regressor. The repetitive nature of his contemplation eventually bored Ki Young. Without a conscious acknowledgement, Ki Young succumbed to his exhaustion. Ki Young felt cozy as he finally took a nap. Awakening from his nap, Ki Young's initial curiosity about the time quickly. He then took a survey of the room, keen on assessing the progress and atmosphere. 
To his surprise, his eyes fell upon Heian, who was already awake, standing alongside Hai Young. As Ki Young rubbed and squinted his eyes, attempting to discern whether he was seeing things correctly. Heian, typically known for her cutesy nature, was now on the verge of a breakdown, her widened eyes casting an unsettling aura while looking at Hai Young. Ki Young, himself feeling a sense of fear, grappled with the implications of Heian's intense expression, questioning the intentions that lay behind her unsettling demeanor. Despite the unsettling atmosphere and the fear creeping through Ki Young, he decided to dismiss the disturbing encounter with Heian as mere drowsiness induced hallucinations. He convinced himself that Heian, known for her sweet and kind nature, couldn't possibly harbor any evil intentions. However, in the midst of his attempts to rationalize, Heian approached him. Standing by his side, she appeared different, as if a shift had occurred in her usual demeanor. Without saying a word, she gently stroked Ki Young's hair. Despite the earlier disturbance, her admiration for him and a sense of fondness seemed to emanate. As Heian observed Ki Young peacefully asleep, a gentle blush adorned her cheeks. Heian found herself consumed by an obsessive fixation on Ki Young, with his image dominating her thoughts. A slight grin played on Heian's lips as she reveled in the intensity of her emotions. In the quietude of the room, she made a silent promise to herself that echoed with an eerie determination. As she gently patted Ki Young's head, she vowed never to let anyone take him away from her. The following day, Ki Young, displaying signs of sleep deprivation, yawned with a gloomy aura surrounding him. Hyun Sung, observant of Ki Young's condition, expressed concern, prompting Ki Young to dismiss it with a casual assurance that he was fine. As the group geared up for the next hunting trip, Ki Young's gaze fixated on Han. In the current moment, she appeared calm and her usual self, engaging in light-hearted banter with Diaku. However, despite her apparent normalcy, Ki Young struggled to shake off the disconcerting image of Han's unsettling stare from the night before. Meanwhile, Hai Young occupied herself with thoughts of showcasing her talents to Ki Young, a determination evident in her actions. In the midst of their preparations, Ki Young couldn't help but ponder the possibility that Heian's unsettling behavior stemmed from jealousy. As the group settled in, Hyun Sung emphasized the importance of closing in on their objective, but also suggested a strategic retreat if needed. Everyone readily agreed with the plan, acknowledging the wisdom in Hyun Sung's approach. As the group advanced, Ki Young, with a plan forming in his mind, aimed to uncover Heian's true feelings. The atmosphere was tense, and everyone remained vigilant. Ki Young, strategically assessing the dynamics, observed Hai Young and contemplated ways to draw closer to her, curious to see if Heian would react with jealousy. Seizing what he perceived as a perfect opportunity, Ki Young discreetly used a small rock, strategically placing it in front of Hai Young to prompt her to trip. As Hai Young stumbled, Ki Young swiftly moved to catch her, offering gentle words to ensure her well-being. But Hai Young found herself caught off guard by Ki Young's unexpected actions. Ki Young, satisfied with the success of his plan, glanced back to gauge Heian's reaction. To Ki Young's surprise, the reappearance of Heian's death stare confirmed his suspicions regarding her jealousy. The intensity of her aura sent a shiver down his spine. A sense of nervousness gripped him as he faced the unexpected consequence of his actions. Ki Young, initially seeking a simple brotherly connection with Heian, found himself uncomfortable with the intensity of her reaction. Ki Young's unease was so obvious that Hai Young beside him began to notice how strange he acts. But Hai Young misinterpreted his expression, mistakenly perceived it as Ki Young attempting to manipulate her. Fueled by frustration, Hai Young transformed her emotions into motivation, determined to prove herself and halt Ki Young's underestimation. As the group advanced, a growing darkness enveloped the atmosphere, creating an eerie backdrop. Ki Young, maintaining vigilance, scanned his surroundings, sensing an unsettling presence as they drew closer to their destination. The feeling of being watched lingered, intensifying the tension in the air. In response, Ki Young, perceiving a potential threat, cautioned the team to lower their voices, suspecting that the creatures ahead might be sensitive to human sounds. As they pressed forward in the ominous terrain, Ki Young's nerves were on edge. Sensing a shift in the atmosphere, Ki Young promptly alerted his team to the heightened awareness he felt in their surroundings. Hyun Sung, attuned to the nuances of the other world, shared his insights, detecting an unusual and weak magical presence that hinted at a potential impending attack. As a shieldsman, Diakku's excitement showed, but Ki Young, ever the strategist, cautioned him against reckless enthusiasm. 
As they cautiously advanced to unravel the intriguing mystery ahead, Diaku and Kiyung were taken aback by the startling sight that unfolded before them. Before them stood a spiral staircase, leading downward into the unknown. The group couldn't help but feel a surge of curiosity, pondering what secrets might lie hidden in the depths of the basement. Hyunsung, ever insightful, shared his suspicion that the staircase was a setup, hinting at the presence of something significant concealed below. However, Kiyung, familiar with Hyunsung's tendencies, couldn't shake the feeling that the leader was dropping hints rather than genuinely speculating. Regardless, Kiyong attentively listened as Hyunsung alluded to the possibility that the stairs might serve as the entrance to the tutorial dungeon. Diaku's suggestion to hunt monsters in their current area found favor with Hyunsung, who deemed it a perfect plan, considering the potential risks of initiating an attack outright. Hyunsung further proposed that they explore the area, reserving the journey to the basement entrance for a future expedition, focusing instead on the more distant surroundings for the day. As the group began their quest to locate monsters, their senses heightened when they detected an approaching presence. In front of them emerged three creatures. This prompted Hai Young and Haiyan to prepare for the imminent threat. Seeing the encounter with the monsters as an opportunity to prove herself, Hai Young resolved to show Ki Young that underestimating her was a mistake. Hyunsung swiftly organized their strategy, assigning Ki Young and Diakgu to engage the monsters while tasking Hai Young and Haiyan with delivering the final blows for practice. Not even a single hesitation in Diakgu and Ki Young was in their formation to counter the three monsters. Diakgu launched his shield with precision, resembling a boomerang. The shield struck one of the monsters, rendering it incapacitated in an instant. The remaining two creatures, incensed by the sudden assault, turned their fury towards the members of Hyunsung's team who dared to challenge them. With the two monsters standing their ground, they awaited the next move from Hyunsung's team. Diaku and Kiyung coordinated in their efforts, and Diaku, silently hoping his shield was made of vibranium for added durability, skillfully redirected the creature's attention. Kiyung, drawing upon his mage abilities, began chanting a spell named Blaze. A burst of flames enveloped his weapon as he prepared to strike. With unparalleled speed, Kiyung took the monster by surprise, using his magically enhanced spear to deliver a powerful blow. The monsters, now facing an unexpected onslaught, found themselves even more astonished as Hyunsung, previously overseeing the battle, entered the fray. With a sword in hand, Hyunsung effortlessly dismantled the remaining monster, his nonchalant expression betraying the ease with which he dispatched the creature. With two monsters now defeated, only one adversary remained. Diaku, in a supportive role, used his shield to hold back the remaining creature, providing an opportunity for the team to plan their final moves. Recognizing that this was their last chance, Hyunsung called upon Heian and Hai Young to deliver the decisive blows. However, when they looked back, only Heian remained in the room. Ki Young and the others were left surprised and puzzled as Hai Young had seemingly vanished without a trace. Heian, equally bewildered, confirmed that just moments ago, Hai Young had been standing right beside her. Hyunsung considered the option of searching for Hai Young, but Ki Young, confident in her return, argued against it, expressing concerns about falling behind if they engaged in additional activities. Their discussion was abruptly interrupted as a spear suddenly flew through the air, targeting the monster. The team was taken aback when they realized Hai Young had been hiding behind them all along. However, the poorly aimed throw failed to affect the creature. And the monster, regaining its composure, retaliated by tossing Diaku aside, who had been holding it off. Kiyung's attention immediately shifted to the throne shieldsman. As the battle unfolded, the monsters shifted their focus to target Kiyung, catching him off guard. In a moment of peril, Hyunsung's swift reaction saved Kiyung and the rest of the team by annihilating the monster. Once the immediate danger passed, Hyunsung inquired about the well-being of his team. However, their relief was short-lived as a woman's scream echoed through the air, leaving them all startled. The team fell into a tense silence as they recognized the voice as Hai Young's. She soon apologized, explaining that she had fallen while trying to follow the rest of the team. Hai Young's explanation about her attempt to help only added to the confusion, particularly for Haiyan, who had been with her just moments before. Hai Young justified her actions, citing an imperfect spear throw in her attempt to contribute to the battle. However, Ki Young, keenly perceptive, saw through Hai Young's motives in his eyes, it became evident that Hai Young was sabotaging the team. 
Furious at this revelation, Kyung realized that Hai Young's screams had attracted the monsters, putting the team at risk. Understanding the urgency of the situation, Kyung promptly advised the team to retreat. Yet, Kyung's words triggered something within Han. In the midst of the chaos, Hai Young reveled in the satisfaction of the turmoil she had caused. Witnessing Kyung's humility and fear brought her joy, as it served her purpose of proving that Kyung wasn't the king of this world. In her eyes, the camp could function without her, and Kyung's perceived arrogance was unwarranted. Hai Young firmly believed that the circumstances revealed Kyung's limited value in the group. As the team made their escape, Kyung turned to Hayan, advising her to run as fast as she could. However, Hayan seemed to be in another world, as if experiencing a troubling episode amidst the turmoil of their hasty retreat. With the urgency of the situation pressing upon them, Kyung remained highly alert, hoping to guide everyone to safety. However, their attempt at escape led them straight into the path of three monsters. Hyunsung, demonstrating leadership, volunteered to act as bait to divert the creature's attention, allowing his team an opportunity to find temporary shelter. Yet, Kyung couldn't help but be surprised by Heian's calm demeanor in the midst of the chaos. Realizing the gravity of the situation, he urgently called out to Hai Young and Heian, instructing them to move swiftly. As Heian turned to relay the urgency to Hai Young, expecting a sense of responsibility, she was met with Hai Young's unapologetic gaze while lifting her middle finger. As the group sprinted away, more monsters closed in on them. Kyung couldn't help but question the decision to bring Hai Young on the hunting trip, given her fragile ego. Despite this, he remained grateful for the presence of Diakgu and Hyunsung. Halting in his tracks, Kyung made a brave decision to face the approaching monsters. Drawing on his magical abilities, he summoned flames to the palm of his hands and called out to the monsters hoping to divert their attention. Diakgu, once again in awe of ki abilities, couldn't hide his astonishment as he idolized the protagonist. Chanting a magic spell, ki summoned a fireball on his hands, ready to confront the monsters and stall their advance. The unleashed flames danced before the monsters, leaving them astonished by ki magical prowess. As ki magic successfully struck the monster, he and Diakgu felt a surge of delight at the critical hit that led to the creature's defeat. However, their joy was short-lived as they realized that they were the only ones advancing forward. Kyung felt a little bit paranoid that Heian and Hai Young went missing. Diakgu's unease grew as he noticed the absence of others, and Kyung, feeling a sense of paranoia, joined him in looking around. Kyung has a gut feeling that something isn't good was about to happen. Diakgu, realizing the oversight, apologized for not paying attention to the girls' whereabouts, especially considering they were all together just moments ago when Hyunsung became the bait. However, Kyung's concern was primarily directed at Heian, understanding the gravity of her being lost in such an unpredictable place. Suggesting they retrace their steps, Kyung was determined to find the missing girls, certain they were still in the vicinity. Kyung kept inquiring Diaku if he's certain that he lost the girls, but he was sure that the girls were still with them as soon as they met the monsters ahead. Despite Diaku's assurance that the girls were with them when they encountered the monsters, Kyung found it strange that two people could go missing simultaneously. The worry for Heian's well-being intensified, fueled by the memory of her peculiar behavior the night before. Roaming around in search of the missing girls, Kyung sensed a familiar and intense aura. It distracted him significantly, causing concern for Diaku. Feeling the need to handle the situation with Haiyan alone, Kyung urged Diaku to search in a different direction, gaslighting himself in an attempt to dismiss any negative assumptions about Haiyan. Kyung ran as fast as he could, following the intense aura. Meanwhile, on Hai Young's side, she was retracing the steps, picking up rocks left behind as a means to mark their path and find their way back. A bit tired from the continuous walking, Hai Young followed the pebbles she had left behind, feeling a sense of pride in marking their path. Unbeknownst to her, Heian had been silently following all along, and as they distanced themselves from the team, Heian confronted Hai Young about sabotaging the group. Surprised by the revelation, Hai Young insisted that she hadn't planned on bringing anyone with her during her escape. Inquiring why Heian had appeared, Hai Young was met with another surprise as Heian summoned her magic to create a cage. The display of magical abilities left Hai Young deeply confused. Heian felt like she has no other choice but to set things right with Hai Young. Heian summoned her magic ability, the Wind Blade. 
In an instant, a powerful gust of wind swept through, leaving Hai Young bewildered by the swift turn of events. She was confused with what Heian did since things were just too fast. Confused and disoriented, Hai Young found herself kneeling on the ground, the impact of Heian's magic having taken her by surprise. She felt extreme agony as her leg got amputated. Hai Young's desperate screams for help echoed in the air, but it was useless since Heian got her cornered now. Hayen revealed that with her magical abilities, had effectively blocked out any sound. In a moment of vulnerability, Hai Young admitted her fault and apologized, pleading for Hayen to stop the impending harm. However, Hayen, consumed by her own emotions, couldn't find it within herself to feel any remorse as her sole desire was to silence Hai Young. Hayen, fueled by a desire for vengeance and to inflict the pain she had felt onto Hai Young, employed her magic to place a tape over Hai Young's mouth effectively silencing her, determined to make Hai Young suffer as much as she had. Heian emphasized the emotional turmoil she experienced when Hai Young attempted to draw Ki Young away from her. In Heian's perspective, having Hai Young around would only make things more difficult and uncomfortable for her. Convinced that the presence of Hai Young posed a threat to her emotional well-being, Heian had made a firm decision. Apologizing for what she was about to do, Heian's actions made Hai Young cry in desperation. Despite her seemingly delightful smile, Heian remained resolute in her intentions. Hai Young, still desperate to be saved from Heian's wrath, pleaded for mercy. Heian, unfazed, released her wind blade, and the room descended into a chaotic and violent scene. As Kyung finally found Heian, the aftermath revealed a tragic outcome, with the consequences of Heian's actions unfolding in a bloodbath. Shocked by the gruesome scene in the room, where Hai Young's amputated arm flew around, Ki Young's happiness at finally finding Han was overshadowed by the shocking violence he witnessed as Han, who had previously worn an angelic face, now bore a murderous look. Ki Young couldn't reconcile the gentle girl he knew with the one who had just committed such a gruesome act. However, as soon as Han's gaze fell upon Ki Young, her demeanor softened abruptly. In a state of shock over Han's sudden violent outburst, Ki Young found himself grappling with the unexpected and disturbing reality of the situation. On the other hand, Hai Young trembled in fear, clinging to the hope of being saved by Ki Young. Ki Young was dismayed since he knew things would escalate, and he would do anything to prevent it, but it was all too late now. As he looked at Hai Young's severed arm, he couldn't deny that it was such a terrifying sight. But despite the horrors, Ki Young realized that running away wouldn't resolve the situation. Heian, still somewhat scared and uncertain about Ki Young's reaction. But to her surprise, Ki Young inquired about her well-being. Ki Young then asked Hai Young what happened to Heian, which surprised her since she was the one who was injured and hurt. Ki Young's gentle inquiries sought to understand the events leading to Hai Young's injuries. Heian, overcome with emotion, sobbed in response to the question, leaving Ki Young hopeful that she would provide an answer that aligned with his wishes. Ki Young harbored a silent hope that Heian's response would absolve her of any involvement in the injuries sustained by Hai Young. Heian began to recount her experience, explaining that upon regaining consciousness, she found herself separated from the group. Hai Young, taken aback by Heian's account, processed the information about the unfortunate events that unfolded in her absence. Despite the disturbing circumstances, Ki Young, showing empathy towards Heian, asked if she was doing all right. Ki Young embraced her as if acknowledging the trauma she had experienced. Despite a lingering sense of fear deep within him, Ki Young masked his emotions with a forced smile. Determined to offer comfort to Han, he gently patted and stroked her head, praising her for handling the situation well. Unbeknownst to Ki Young, Hai Young, witnessing the display of favoritism, experienced a blur in her vision. In the tragic realization of her own downfall, Hai Young recognized the consequences of her actions. Attempting to avoid triggering another episode from Haiyan, Ki Young chose to believe that Hai Young might have inadvertently activated a trap within the dungeon, or perhaps stumbled upon a magical mechanism designed to safeguard the area. Ki Young, with a heavy heart, relayed to Haiyan the existence of a magical wall encountered upon entering the dungeon. Despite harboring reservations about Hai Young's usefulness to the team, Ki Young found no satisfaction in the unfortunate turn of events. As Ki Young surveyed the scene, he couldn't ignore the unnaturally clean cuts on Hai Young's body, a detail that might raise suspicions, especially from someone as perceptive as Hyun Sung. In the face of this chaotic situation, Ki Young took a deep breath. 
Despite the weight on his conscience, Ki Young convinced himself that this was the best course of action given Hai Young's unfortunate demise. A sense of dismay lingered in his thoughts as he made the difficult decision. In order to avoid leaving Hai Young's body to rot in the dungeon, Ki Young utilized his flame wall magic to conduct a proper cremation. The intense flames swiftly consumed her remains. Ki Young, understanding the sensitivity of the situation, acknowledged that a proper burial within the camp might have been ideal, but the current circumstances didn't permit it. Despite the difficult choice, Ki Young believed that offering Hai Young a dignified farewell through cremation was the most considerate option in their perilous reality. Ki Young, despite the grim circumstances, believed that a small gesture of respect should be extended to Hai Young. Ki Young still felt a little dismay, but for him, this was the right thing to do. While Ki Young grappled with a lingering sense of dismay, Heian's unapologetic demeanor and growing obsession with Ki Young added an eerie atmosphere to the situation. Ki Young couldn't shake off the unsettling feeling as he noticed Heian quietly laughing. Ki Young couldn't help but feel a sense of unease, questioning whether, on that fateful night, Heian wasn't the only one who had transformed into a monster because he was the same. As the gloomy mood persisted, Ki Young and Heian approached Diakgu, carrying with them the weight of the recent events. Diakgu rushed to Ki Young's side, concern etched on his face, inquiring about their well being and the whereabouts of Hai Young. The somber silence from Ki Young spoke volumes. Diakgu immediately understood and sympathizes silently. As the trio moved forward to find a shelter, Ki Young pondered the presence of remaining monsters. Diakgu explained that Hyun Sung had managed to divert most of the threats away. Ki Young suggested to head back to the camp since Hyun Sung is capable of handling the monsters anyway. However, the strain on Ki Young's stamina became apparent as he teetered on the brink of exhaustion. Ki Young, grappling with the realization of his mana exhaustion, accepted Hyun's suggestion to rest in the dungeon for a while. Diakgu, displaying genuine concern, proposed setting up a camp before their departure, while Heian, sharing the same concern for Ki Young, agreed to the idea. Heian was a bit paranoid that maybe Ki Young's fatigue was the effect of witnessing Hai Young's unfortunate fate. As they found a shelter, Diakgu worked on setting up a fire for warmth. In the midst of the task, he initiated a conversation, expressing sorrow over the day's events. Diaku sympathized with Hai Young's unfortunate passing, recognizing her hard work, however, Ki Young, burdened by a different perspective, saw Hai Young as a hindrance to their team. Diaku, understanding Ki Young's perspective, dropped the sympathy and agreed that surviving the ordeal was something to be grateful for. Ki Young, opening up about his feelings, expressed his inability to cope if Diaku and Heian had faced the same fate as Hai Young. This confession touched both Diaku and Heian deeply leaving them blushing. As he blushes, Diaku admits that if he faces the same scenario as what Ki Young mentioned, he would have reacted the same way. On the other hand, Heian couldn't stop blushing from Ki Young's sweet words. Since they are settled in, Diaku, taking the initiative to patrol the area for safety, planned to make sure they were secure. But in Ki Young's mind, there was a subtle fear of being alone with Heian. Diaku, showing concern for Ki Young, asked Heian to look after him. Heian, with a reassuring demeanor, promised Diaku that she could be relied upon. Diaku then decided to head out, but he promised that he wouldn't take that much long. As Diaku assured them of his swift return, a calm yet awkward atmosphere settled in. Taking advantage of the moment, Ki Young opened his status window to evaluate his progress. To his amazement, his luck stat had ascended to level 23, earning him a heroic rank. Despite this achievement, the system continued its criticism, deeming Ki Young's overall rating as bare minimum. Unperturbed by the system's criticism, Ki Young found solace in the surprising increase in his luck stat. Despite the chaotic events of the day, he considered it an advantage for his personal stats. Intrigued by Heian's progress, Ki Young inquired about it, which Heian revealed a slight increase in her magic stat. Seeking more details, Ki Young utilized his mind's eye skill to inspect Heian's status window. As Ki Young examined Heian's stats using his mind's eye skill, Heian's overall rating was labeled as Ki Young's number one fan. This surprising declaration left Ki Young perplexed, as he had anticipated a more traditional assessment of her stats and progress. Taking advantage of the moment, Heian initiated a conversation with Ki Young about the day's chaotic events. She questioned if Ki Young was saddened by the unfortunate incident. 
Kiyong, grappling with guilt, couldn't bring himself to lift his head, recognizing that denying any emotional impact would be a falsehood. The memory of Hai Young's tragic fate sent shivers down Kiyong's spine. Despite the tragedy, Kiyong understood that he needed to stay focused on his main goal. Recognizing the potential threat posed by Han's unpredictable nature, Kiyong adopted a diplomatic approach. He embraced her gently, expressing relief that she remained unharmed. Kiyong knew that, in this harsh and unpredictable world, he had to navigate carefully and act amiably to survive. Despite the tender hug, there was a noticeable absence of genuine warmth in his eyes. In stark contrast, Han, who had developed a sociopathic nature, found herself in tears of joy as Kiyong embraced her. Despite Kiyong's single-minded focus on his survival goal, he understood the necessity of treading carefully with Han. In a way, he acknowledged that she could be a crucial element in his survival, and he resolved to hold on to her until the end. Despite the acceptance, there was an air of calculated strategy in his approach, acknowledging the reality of the individuals they had become. Kiyong, feeling the urgency of the situation, made the unexpected decision to entertain a romantic interest in Han. Despite believing that a platonic relationship would be more appropriate, he saw it as a strategic move to quickly gain Han's favor and cooperation. As the atmosphere intensified and things became more intimate between Kiyong and Han, with blushes coloring Han's cheeks. But then Han was slightly furious as Diaku returned from his patrolling and disrupted the romantic moment. Diaku, realizing he had interrupted something, swiftly apologized, but his subsequent statement left Han startled and slightly embarrassed. Kiyong, puzzled by Diaku's seemingly intentional interference, questioned why he suddenly took on the role of a wingman. Diaku, with such confidence, assumed that Kiyong liked Han. Kiyong maintained a curious demeanor, however, his intrigue shifted as he questioned Diaku's choice of addressing Han as the big sister, despite Diaku being older. Heian, in response to Diaku's respectful reference, blushed as Diaku sees her as a potential sister-in-law. Kiyong, on the other hand, found himself flabbergasted by Diaku's assumptions. Kiyong do understand why Heian always favors him due to her feelings. But he considered the realm of emotions to be extraordinary and somewhat perplexing. Kiyong couldn't help but wonder if Diaku had been orchestrating the encouragement for Heian to like him all along. Diaku, admitting to his role in the matter, revealed that Kiyong's request to look after Han had been the starting point for him to actively promote a potential romance between them. Diaku was proud declaring himself as the love doctor who crafted love stories. But Diaku's passion for making Kiyong and Han the epitome of romance left Kiyong increasingly weirded out and slightly irritated. Despite Kiyong's lack of romantic interest in Heian, Diaku's determination persisted thinking he's giving Kiyong a huge favor. The realization that he and Heian were the main characters in the romance story Diaku wanted to craft made Kiyong cringe deeply. The thought triggered discomfort, yet Diaku, seemingly compassionate about spreading love, remained oblivious to Kiyong's unease. As the night passed, the trio slept soundly, the sun casting a gentle glow through the holes in the dungeon walls at dawn. Amidst the quiet, Kiyong observed Diaku, who claimed not to be very bright, sleeping loudly. Deciding it was time to wake them up, Kiyong shook off the discomfort, acknowledging the need to prepare. Turning his attention to Heian, Kiyong gently attempted to wake her up. In her sleep, Heian, with a cute plea, expressed her desire for a few more minutes of rest. However, the transition from a seemingly adorable sleeper to a rather demonic-looking individual upon awakening surprised Kiyong. Despite the contrasting personalities, he couldn't help but find her a cute woman with a somewhat terrifying demeanor. Recognizing the need to cooperate with Han in this unpredictable world, Kiyong, although slightly unnerved, decided that avoiding her was not the best choice. Kiyong made a conscious effort to approach Han with calmness and gentleness, patiently waiting for her to wake from her slumber. Once Han was fully awake, Kiyong informed her of the need to return to the camp. Kiyong was hoping for a smooth start to the new day and averted troubles. Back at the camp, Jihai assumed a regal demeanor, receiving a massage from her underlings and exuding an air of authority. However, Jihai lingered on Hyunsung and the others who had not yet returned from the hunting trip. Timing was on their side as the camp guards spotted Kiyong, swiftly deciding to open the entrance. Jihai, losing her composed demeanor, hurriedly stood up to welcome Kiyong and the others back from their hunting trip. Approaching them, she commended their efforts. 
She then inquired about the well-being of Hai Young and Hyun Sung, which Ki Young responded that Hai Young had passed away while Hyun Sung was just running late and will return shortly. Ji Hai was shocked, but Ki Young, recognizing the need for a more in-depth explanation, hinted at a long story and inquired why they had set up a block at the entrance. Still in a state of shock, Ji Hai, seeking privacy, asked Ki Young for a private conversation. Sensing that Jihai might be seeking a more comprehensive explanation, Ki Young realized that her request likely indicated a desire to understand the full details. Ki Young glanced back to check on Han and, as expected, noticed her jealousy when he was talking to another woman. In response, Ki Young gently patted Han's head and explained that he needed to discuss something privately to reassure her and prevent Jihai from facing a fate similar to Hai Young's. Both Diaku and Heian understood the importance of privacy, respectfully moving forward in the camp. In their private conversation, Jihai questioned Ki Young's seemingly casual announcement of Hai Young's death and speculated that Hai Young must have done something to meet such a horrible fate. Ki Young opted for a simple explanation, stating that Hai Young had screamed amidst the monsters, almost like she intentionally made herself the bait. Ki Young, however, had to carefully navigate the conversation, pretending that they all equally suffered to shield Haiyan's name from any blame. As Ji Hai and Ki Young delved into the matter of the block at the entrance, Ki Young felt a sense of relief that Ji Hai didn't press for more details about Hai Young. Ji Hai then disclosed that the previous morning, Siakwu and some camp members had decided to leave the shelter in what seemed like an act of rebellion. This revelation shocked Ki Young, especially considering Siakwu's questionable past and their strained relationship. Confusion deepened for Ki Young as Ji Hai explained that Siakwu had framed their departure as a mission to save Hyun Sun. Ki Young expressed frustration to Ji Hai, ranting that Siakwu and his companions were likely feeling threatened in their current position, while an intimidating man entered the camp. Keen on learning more details, Ki Young was interrupted as Siakwu and his subordinates made a flashy entrance. Jihai clarified that they were being cautious, considering the possibility of Siakwu and his comrades planning vengeance against the camp. As Siakwu approached Ki Young with an air of complete confidence, the camp's atmosphere grew tense. Jihai's disappointment hung in the air, but for Ki Young, a sense of unease settled in as Siakwu entered with an intimidating figure by his side. Siakwu himself faded into the background for Ki Young as his attention fixated on this mysterious individual. Ki Young, feeling a chill down his spine, went numb in the presence of this enigmatic person. Unable to comprehend the situation fully, Ki Young couldn't shake off the ominous feeling that this individual brought into the camp. Amidst the group accompanying Siakwu, the mysterious man stood out distinctly, overshadowing the others despite their apparent skill. Ki Young's observation led to a grim conclusion that out of the seven people who had left the camp with Siakwu, only one had survived. Ki Young formulated the theory that the demise of the majority might be linked to their reckless actions in aiding Siakwu. Feeling an unnerving sensation from the mysterious individual, Yong Jin Ho, Ki Young decided to utilize his mind's eye. Upon inspecting his status window, Ki Young uncovered disturbing details that Jin Ho possessed a murderous tendency, yet the astonishing aspect was his rare ranked class as a magic swordsman. Ki Young got even more goosebumps to see that Jin Ho has a killer vibe which is alarming. Ki Young examined Jin Ho's overall rating, prompting heightened caution due to the realization that Jin Ho was indeed a dangerous individual. Taking a cautious approach, Ki Young requested Ji Hai to summon Diakku and Hain. Ki Young knew he had to stay vigilant in the presence of such a formidable character. Expecting a potentially tense encounter, Ki Young was taken by surprise as Jin Ho greeted him politely. Jin Ho's genuine and bright smile gave the impression of a person willing to be a companion. Ki Young, now confused, observed that despite Jin Ho's scars and a masculine physique, his smile made him appear friendly. Jin Ho shared information he had heard from Siakwu, expressing anticipation about meeting Ki Young, an advanced magician capable of summoning flames from his hands. Deep down, frustration welled up within Ki Young as he realized Siakwu's actions had sparked Jin Ho's interest in him. Curiosity nagged at Ki Young regarding the extent of information Siakwu had divulged to Jin Ho about him. In contrast, Siakwu appeared uncomfortable in Ki Young's presence. After the introductions, Ki Young offered Jin Ho and Siakwu a tour inside the camp, showcasing the productive and harmonious living arrangements of the campers. As they strolled through the camp, the residents praised Ki Young for his hard work during the recent hunting trip. 
In response, Kiyung beamed with a radiant smile, expressing gratitude for their acknowledgement. However, Jinho couldn't conceal his astonishment at the peaceful and oasis-like atmosphere of the camp. The unexpected tranquility stood in stark contrast to the chaos he had experienced since the beginning. While Jinho merely expressed his amazement, Kiyung, following his gut feeling, couldn't shake the instinct to maintain caution and distance from Jinho. After some time, Diaku and Heian hurriedly approached Kiyong with a sense of urgency, their expressions indicating concern. Diaku and Heian quickly glanced at Jinho and his companions as Kiyong introduced them as newcomers. However, the expressions on Diaku and Heian's faces revealed a sense of fear in response to Jinho's intimidating presence. The tension became palpable, and Jinho, perceiving the unwelcoming atmosphere, voiced his surprise and offered an apology. He explained that they were a bit on edge and needed a place to stay. Apologizing once more, Jinho encouraged Kiyung to take it easy, expressing a belief that they were not so different. Kiyung, now perplexed by the revelation, grappled with the idea that there were individuals in this world who hunted people rather than monsters. Jinho, seemingly offering more details, described bad individuals among whom there was an archer and one carrying a sword. Sensing a potential intimidation tactic, Jinho asked Kiyong if he had ever encountered anyone matching those details. Recognizing the implied challenge, Kiyong immediately raised his guard, understanding that Jinho was insinuating that he and his companions were the ones he spoke of. The atmosphere turned awkward and intense, akin to a standoff, as if a silent duel was about to unfold. Kiyong felt the weight of the challenge and maintained a sharp gaze, realizing that the situation had escalated. Jinho's companions began preparing for the impending duel. Diaku and Heian, ready to assist Kiyong, stood prepared for the escalating tension. Jinho, visibly excited, readied himself to draw his sword, wearing a disturbing smile. Just as the confrontation reached a critical point, Hyunsung arrived, bringing a sense of relief to Kiyong. Jinho, slightly disappointed that the anticipated duel had been averted. He quickly shifted his demeanor to a more friendly one, wearing a smile as he expressed happiness to meet Kiyong. While Kiyong was grateful for Hyunsung's safe return, Hyunsung curious about the newcomers. Kiyong took the initiative to introduce Jinho and his companions as individuals brought by Siakwu. Despite Hyunsung's innate strength and gifted abilities, he too felt an unusual sense of intimidation when Jinho engaged him in conversation. As Jinho approached him and formally introduced himself, a chill ran down Hyunsung's spine, a reaction that Kiyung keenly observed with concern. Kiyung couldn't help but wonder about the cause of Hyunsung's reaction. It was unusual to see a kind and composed person like Hyunsung expressing dismay towards others, and made Kiyung think that maybe Hyunsung is repressing his anger. Kiyung, puzzled by Hyunsung's unusual reaction, entertained the possibility that Hyunsung might have met Jinho before but it became evident that this encounter was the first time Jinho had met Hyunsung. Kiyung swiftly picked up on the hint that perhaps in Hyunsung's past life or before his regression, he had encountered Jinho. The possibility lingered that Jinho might have been an adversary to Hyunsung in his previous existence. Kiyung attentively observed Hyunsung's reaction, noting the evident dismay that the gifted and strong individual couldn't conceal. Kiyung, noticing Hyunsung's struggle to maintain composure, gently poked his shoulders to help him regain focus. As Hyunsung snapped back to his senses, he politely introduced himself and extended a handshake to Jinho. Despite Jinho's attempts to appear nice and polite, Kiyung remained certain of Jinho's dangerous and killer nature. Jinho initiated a conversation, expressing gratitude for meeting Hyunsung, the person Siakwu had mentioned as the one in charge of the camp. Jinho, displaying his curiosity, inquired about Hyunsung's stats, intrigued by the strength he exuded, but Hyunsung, maintaining his guarded stance, responded firmly, considering his stats to be personal information. As the conversation shifted to how Hyunsung managed to save numerous survivors, Kiyung on the sidelines admired Hyunsung's ability to handle his emotions in the face of probing questions. Observing Hyunsung's reactions, Kiyong formulated a theory, speculating that perhaps in Hyunsung's past life, he had encountered Jinho. And maybe Jinho may have been a malevolent villain responsible for annihilation and chaos. Meanwhile, Jinho, despite his seemingly genuine demeanor, prepared to ask Hyunsung for a favor. A collective surprise swept through Kiyong and the group when Jinho requested permission for himself and his companions to stay in the camp. 
Jin Ho quickly reassured them, emphasizing that they wouldn't be freeloading since they had brought food supplies and were willing to contribute to the camp. Hyun Sung, demonstrating his welcoming nature, decided to give Jin Ho and his companions a chance to become residents, believing in the camp's ethos of embracing survivors. As they officially became camp citizens, the archer introduced himself as Kim Yi Joon, leaving Ki Young still puzzled about Hyun Sung's decision. Another companion, Lee Jichyo, holding a spear, politely introduced himself to Ki Young. Ki Young took the initiative to assign Diakgu the task of giving the newcomers, Jin Ho, Yi Joon, and Jichyo, a tour of the camp along with Ji Hai. Although Diakgu harbored reservations about Hyun Sung's decision, Ki Young advised him to go along with it for now but he instructed Diakgu to remain vigilant and report any suspicious activity to him. Diakgu, despite his discomfort with the newcomers, decided to be cordial as he politely invited Jinho and his companions to follow him for a tour. Jinho expressed delight at being accompanied on the tour, but Ki Young and Heian couldn't conceal their discomfort. Glancing back at Hyun Sung, Ki Young speculated that perhaps Hyun Sung, being wise, chose to keep potential adversaries close for strategic reasons. The surprise came when Ki Young observed that Jin Ho, a notorious individual, hesitated to engage in a supposed duel upon Hyun Sung's arrival. Ki Young, impressed by Jin Ho's quick witted assessment of Hyun Sung's strength, began to view Jin Ho as a psychopath. Despite the unpleasant aura surrounding Jin Ho, Ki Young saw this situation as a perfect opportunity, sparking a new set of considerations and strategies. Ki Young, sensing Hyun Sung's distracted and gloomy aura after the encounter with Jin Ho, decided to approach him to discuss the day's events. But Hyun Sung was still distracted about Jin Ho, as his gloomy aura could be sensed by Ki Young. Ki Young inquired if he had met Jin Ho before, given the strong reaction. Hyun Sung, not divulging full details, acknowledged a brief encounter with Jin Ho in the past, explaining that Jin Ho didn't know him well. Ki Young, understanding the complexity of Hyun Sung's emotions, respected the boundaries of the conversation. Ki Young, in an attempt to be a reliable confidant, assured Hyun Sung that he wouldn't reveal his feelings towards Jin Ho. Hyun Sung, touched by Ki Young's genuine and somewhat silly approach, couldn't help but smile. Ki Young, expressing gratitude for Hyun Sung's safe return, received an even deeper appreciation from Hyun Sung, who was more thankful for the safe return of the entire group. As Hyun Sung inquired about any concerns during their journey back to the camp, Ki Young's demeanor shifted to one of sadness. Heian, sensing the gravity of the situation, felt a sense of nervousness as Ki Young will deliver the somber news to Hyun Sung. Knowing he had to convey distressing news, he shared with a heavy heart that Hai Young had passed away. Shocked by the news, Hyun Sung inquired about the circumstances surrounding Hai Young's demise. Ki Young somberly explained that Hai Young had fallen victim to an unidentifiable magic. While Ki Young recounted the tragic incident to Hyun Sung, Heian's nerves were on edge fearing that Ki Young might inadvertently reveal her involvement in Hai Young's demise. Ki Young clarified that the mysterious occurrence took place during their separation from Hyun Sung. He explained how, on their return journey, he discovered Hai Young and Heian had become separated from him and Diaku. Ki Young shared the grim details, describing the devastating scene he encountered when he finally located Hai Young, her limbs decapitated in a dying state. Expressing uncertainty about the nature of the magic used against Hai Young, Ki Young speculated that she might have fallen victim to a trap within the dungeon. As Ki Young expressed the details of Hai Young's tragic demise to Hyun Sung, the latter, familiar with the dungeon, contemplated the notion of traps within. Ki Young, however, sensed a growing suspicion from Hyun Sung, despite the fact that there were no traps in reality. Ki Young, adopting a facade of sorrow, explained his decision to cremate Hai Young expressing concern for her body being consumed by monsters. Heian, harboring deep feelings for Ki Young, couldn't help but shed tears witnessing his emotional display. In Ki Young's mind, he grappled with the decision to reveal more honest aspects of the incident, acknowledging the evolving dynamics of the situation. Ki Young believed that his explanation to Hyun Sung would be the best just to save Heian's image. As Ki Young considered how to manage the aftermath of Hai Young's demise, he believed that framing the heartless Jin Ho for the incident could be a strategic move. With Jin Ho being a magic swordsman, Ki Young saw an opportunity to create suspicion around him. In Ki Young's mind, this plan seemed like a perfect way to not only protect Hai but also make the camp aware of Jin Ho's potentially dangerous personality. 
He envisioned it as a win-win situation that could serve the dual purpose of safeguarding the camp and preserving Haiyan's reputation. As Ki Young and Hyun Sung decided to take a rest, Ki Young found himself bored. Ki Young kept staring at Hyun Sung as it has been a while since he told him about Hai Young's case. Despite having a plan to frame Jin Ho for Hai Young's demise, Ki Young chose not to mention anything about Jin Ho being suspicious or a suspect. Instead, he believed it would be more effective if Hyun Sung independently realized that Jin Ho was the cause behind the incident. Ki Young thought it wise to let Hyun Sung figure out the truth about Jin Ho, considering Jin Ho and his companions were now keeping a watchful eye on them. Ki Young decided to be cautious, allowing Hyun Sung to independently piece together the puzzle and consider Jin Ho as the main suspect in Hai Young's unfortunate fate. Ki Young was confident in his plan, knowing that Jin Ho was a criminal and a killer, making him a potential enemy for Hyun Sung in the future. As Ki Young contemplated how to deal with this dangerous individual, Hyun Sung shifted the conversation to the loot from the dungeon. Since Ki Young, Diaku, and Han didn't acquire anything significant, Hyun Sung suggested that the newcomers join them on the next hunting trip. Despite the surprise in Ki Young's suggestion, Hyun Sung saw the potential benefits of combining forces, especially with Han unlocking her new class as a magician. Ki Young stressed the urgency of having more manpower, but Hyun Sung expressed the need to carefully consider the decision. Ki Young, however, sensed that Hyun Sung's hesitation stemmed from the potential separation between their party and Jin Ho's during the hunting trip. Understanding the gravity of the situation, Ki Young reminded Hyun Sung that they couldn't risk someone else meeting a fate similar to Hai Young's and stressed the importance of having additional support. Ki Young saw the upcoming hunting trip as Hyun Sung's opportunity to confront the person responsible for Hai Young's demise. Ki Young couldn't stop smiling, especially when his plan is perfectly crafted. It was like a well-crafted theater, with Hyun Sung as the main star taking center stage. Despite his internal satisfaction, Ki Young maintained a casual demeanor during their conversation, not pressing Hyun Sung on the matter. To his surprise, Hyun Sung agreed to the plan of having the newcomers join the hunting trip, as long as they were separated from Jin Ho's party. Ki Young was pleased with this decision, as the idea of being around a psychopath like Jin Ho was not appealing to him. Hyun Sung, ready to set the plan into motion, decided to conclude their meeting, acknowledging the need for immediate preparations. Before discussing the hunting trip with Jin Ho, he asked Ki Young to summon Haiyan and Diaku. Ki Young, pleased with Hyun Sung's decision, committed to providing full support with his abilities. Meanwhile, in the camp, the girls were already admiring Jin Ho, who had shown consideration by assisting with labor work. Despite it being only a day, Jin Ho's helpful nature had made a positive impression on them. His actions, particularly assisting with challenging tasks, had already earned admirers. Jin Ho, however, downplayed his contributions, asserting that in their dire circumstances, survivors should naturally lend a hand to one another. There seemed to be a collective effort among Jin Ho, his companions, and even Siakwu to portray a positive image. They emphasized their willingness to assist whenever needed, subtly ingraining themselves into the dynamics of the camp. Jin Ho voiced out his opinion that helping others aren't that much of a big deal because in their situation, they must be helping each other. Jin Ho, with his cheerful personality, expressed the view that helping others was a fundamental aspect of their shared struggle, prompting laughter and agreement from those around him. Despite the positive atmosphere, Ki Young remained wary knowing Jin Ho's true nature. He couldn't shake off the feeling that Jin Ho's charm means to manipulate perceptions and hide darker intentions beneath the surface. In Ki Young's discerning gaze, Jin Ho appeared to be nothing more than an individual with a sinister agenda, someone who sought to claim human lives. The stark contrast between this perception and Jin Ho's outwardly amiable behavior left Ki Young perplexed, pondering the true motives that lurked beneath the surface. As Jin Ho and his companions garnered praise for their helpful actions, a subtle shift occurred among the campers. Some began drawing comparisons between the newcomers and Ki Young, implying that Ki Young should emulate Jin Ho's positive demeanor. Ki Young couldn't fathom how his efforts to protect the camp were being overlooked and criticized. Choosing to disregard the gossiping campers, Ki Young approached Haiyan and Diaku, intent on discussing the upcoming hunting trip as instructed by Hyun Sung. As Diaku peacefully napped, Haiyan exuded a vibrant and positive energy upon encountering Ki Young. Her blush and happiness hinted at a sense of accomplishment as she revealed her mastery of new spells, including one that manipulated air itself as Ki Young took a moment to commend Haiyan for honing her magical skills. 
With a genuine smile, she clung to ki arm, attributing her progress to his guidance. In his mind, the notion of everyone assuming a romantic connection between them irked him, while Diakgu, ever the romantic observer, sensed love in the air. Meanwhile, ki who's getting annoyed at Diakgu's genuine admiration of an idea of him and Heian becoming a couple, felt like he shouldn't give Diakgu the satisfaction he wants. As Heian entranced seemed to fall deeper, ki and Diakgu delved into the serious matters discussed with hyun Inquisitive about ki discussion with hyun Heian probed for details. To her surprise, ki unveiled the plan for another hunting trip, this time accompanied by Jin-ho and his companions. Diakgu and Heian, sensing the ominous nature of these newcomers, couldn't hide their gloominess, but understanding the potential risks, ki advised them to maintain a safe distance. Despite their reservations, Diakgu and Heian pledged to give their best with unwavering determination. ki made it clear that Heian could interact with Jinho's party, excluding Siakwu due to their troubled history. With determination, Heian assured ki that she would avoid individuals like Siakwu. Following this brief exchange, the trio advanced to their meeting with Hyun-sung. During their passage, they encountered Jin-ho and his companions. It resulted in an awkward stare down between the two groups. In that tense moment of mutual scrutiny, ki Young's gaze bore into Jin-ho, emphasizing his deep-seated mistrust. Jin-ho reciprocated the intense gaze with a steely one of his own. Later on, the trio went to Hyun-sung. The three of them were full of energy as they greeted Hyun-sung. Even Hyun Sung was surprised that they were full of spirit despite all the circumstances. Hyun Sung, observing the trio's energetic entrance, was pleasantly surprised to see them all gathered simultaneously. Diakgu jokingly inquired whether Hyun Sung might have been keeping some delicious food hidden from them. Hyun Sung, wearing a smile, reassured them that what had occupied his time wasn't overly serious. To further ease the mood, he presented a bag he had packed a gesture of preparation for the trio as they embarked on their upcoming hunting trip. Hyunsung's action of opening the bag revealed a radiant glow emanating from within. The radiant glow spilled forth, captivating the attention of the trio. Even the typically nonchalant ki couldn't help but feel a sense of affirmation in his decision to trust Hyunsung from the beginning. In a surprising turn of events, Hyunsung revealed the items hidden in the seemingly ordinary bag, each radiating a sense of hidden value despite their humble appearance. As they marveled at the unexpected treasures, Hyunsung disclosed that during their separation in the dungeon, he stumbled upon a treasure chest containing these valuable artifacts. Choosing Hyunsung as his leader felt like hitting the jackpot for ki especially considering that this was Hyunsung's second chance in the other world. They all analyzed the items and the first one was the Iron Dwarf's Steel Bracelet, a common ranked accessory crafted by the now extinct Iron Dwarf race. The bracelet boasted stat-boosting properties, elevating the user's stamina by 3 points, endurance by 1 point, and strength by 1 point. Next is the Sacred Healing Ring. This rare grade ring had an air of mystery surrounding its origin, equipped with low-grade holy magic and the ability to heal, albeit restricted to once a day. The final item unveiled was the Magic Shield Ring, another rare grade accessory with an ancient history. Despite its unknown origin, this ring could conjure a magic shield twice a day, utilizing the magic power stored within it. As they carefully examined the rings, Diaku stepped forward, expressing his choice of the dwarf's steel bracelet. With gratitude, he donned the bracelet, promising to repay Hyunsung for his generosity. Hyunsung, however, insisted that their appreciation was more than sufficient. ki couldn't help but feel content as the bracelet fit Diakgu perfectly, sealing their decision to let him have it. With the two remaining rings in front of him, ki found himself admiring the magic shield ring. He saw it as a valuable item, comparable to the common grade bracelets that enhance various stats. On the contrary, the sacred healing ring, with its innate healing properties, seemed like the perfect fit for Haiyan in ki eyes. ki considered the practicality of Haiyan possessing the sacred healing ring, envisioning her swift healing abilities in case he ever got injured. To his delight, it seemed like a perfect match when Haiyan instinctively chose the sacred healing ring without any prompting. Left with the magic shield ring, ki smiled awkwardly as he took the ring, completing the distribution of the valuable items. ki unable to conceal his admiration, approached Hyun-sung with a request to keep the valuable items, however. Hyun-sung insisted that the accessories were unique and could only be activated by their respective users. 
He believed that the trio deserved the items, but Kyung felt a bit reserved, acknowledging that they hadn't done much for Hyun Sung yet. Nonetheless, both Hayan and Kyung genuinely expressed their thanks for Hyun Sung's generosity. Hyun Sung, in a sincere tone, reassured the trio that they need not worry about repaying him, emphasizing the camaraderie they shared as comrades. Despite Hyun Sung's genuine intentions, Kyung found it challenging to fully trust people. Lingering doubts persisted in Kyung's mind, wondering if Hyun Sung's goodwill was a mere act to create a sense of indebtedness, regardless of these suspicions. Having Hyun Sung as their companion was a comforting thought. Kyung couldn't shake off the feeling that he was lagging behind, especially considering the potential he saw in Hayan and Diaku, who seemed poised to become formidable players. But Kyung took pride in being the brains of the team, he was confident in his strategic thinking, he considered himself a valuable asset like other players in the continent. Kyung speculated that one reason Hyun Sung kept him around was due to the loyalty and reliance of Diaku and Hayan, who valued Kyung's input in decision making. Kyung envisioned a future where, if Hyun Sung were to establish a kingdom, he could take on a role akin to an administrative officer. However, Kyung felt a need to showcase his own potential and prove that he, too, could be a valuable asset to the team. With a newfound acknowledgement of their camaraderie, Kyung embraced the idea that they were comrades striving to support each other for stability, he recognized the need to contribute and be understanding to make this dynamic work. After the distribution of the items, Diaku, expressing admiration for his comrades, interjected and inquired about the timing of their departure. Hyun Sung, adopting a straightforward approach, emphasized the urgency of the deployment, however, he cautioned that they must remain vigilant as he recognized the potential threat posed by Jin Ho and his companions. Hyun Sung's concerns resonated with the trio, who openly admitted their suspicions about Jin Ho's party. Understanding the potential danger, Hyun Sung stressed the importance of being prepared, especially considering the possibility of working underground during the hunting trip. Amidst the intensity of discussing their plans and the potential danger, Diaku lightened the atmosphere by suggesting a cheer for their camaraderie. The trio enthusiastically placed their hands in the center, and together they counted to three, celebrating the bond and unity among them. With their hands raised high, the trio cheered, bringing life to their teamwork. Kiyun, in particular, eagerly anticipated the moment when Jin Ho would face justice at the hands of Hyun Sung. It seemed like Kiyong was patiently waiting for his stage to be set for the unfolding events. Siakwu cautiously approached Jin Ho, a glimmer of uncertainty in his eyes, as he inquired about the possibility of cooperating with Hyun Sung's party for the upcoming hunting trip. Jin Ho, however, seized this opportunity to reveal his true colors in a hushed tone. He conveyed to his companions that this expedition could serve as the perfect chance to eliminate Hyun Sung, the influential leader of the camp. Just as Jin Ho's party readied themselves, Hyung Sun, unaware of the underlying deceit, arrived to inspect their preparedness. Grateful for their acceptance of the proposal, he extended his thanks, genuinely believing in the potential strength that unity could bring in the hunting trip. In response to Hyung Sun's gratitude, Jin Ho, with a sly smile, emphasized that the hunting trip was not just about eliminating monsters, but also an opportunity to gather crucial clues about the dungeon. Jinho, the master of deception, seamlessly shifted his demeanor into one of friendliness as he engaged with Hyun Sung. His expression radiated delight, as if forging a newfound camaraderie. Kyung, despite the apparent friendliness, he couldn't detect a single ounce of sincerity in Jinho's words. As both parties set out on their hunting trip, Jinho sensed that Hyun Sung's party had experience exploring dungeons. In response, Kyung, carefully choosing his words, downplayed their capabilities, stating that stumbling upon the dungeon was a stroke of luck. Kyung, utilizing a strategic move, shared the assumption that clearing all dungeons was a prerequisite for advancing in the other world's tutorial. While this information was speculative, Jinho, delighted by the prospect, saw it as a golden opportunity to join forces and expedite their hunting trip. Attempting to maintain a facade of camaraderie, Kiyang and Jinho engaged in a light conversation about their occupations back on Earth, since this is a tactical maneuver aimed to momentarily lower Jinho's guard. Unbeknownst to Kiyang Heian, sensing the underlying tension and discomfort, clung to him as a shield. Jinho's observant eyes didn't miss the constant closeness between Kiyang and Haiyan during their hunting trip. Curiosity got the better of him, and he inquired about their relationship, prompting the surprising question of whether they were dating or a couple. Haiyan's cheeks turned a shade of red, 
her heart fluttering as the unspoken truth emerged. Kiyoung got nervous since Jinho seemed to be a matchmaker like Diakgu too, but then Kiyoung didn't mind the assumptions since he do intends to be closer to Han. Han's cheeks flushed with a rosy hue as Kiyoung openly confirmed their romantic interest and officially announced their relationship. Jinho, displaying a seemingly supportive demeanor, cheered for the newfound couple, however, it was Diakgu who wore an even broader grin. Siakwu's expression soured as Kiyong declared his relationship with Heian, memories of a troubled history with them casting a shadow on his face. However, Kiyong's stress levels escalated as Heian's obsessive tendencies resurfaced in response to the public announcement. As both parties continued their journey, Hyun Sung, the appointed leader, provided an update on their progress, revealing they were nearing their destination. Ahead of them stood a large entrance, its interior emanating an eerie and gloomy atmosphere that sent shivers down their spines. Undeterred, Hyun Sung took the lead, guiding the group into the ominous depths of the dungeon. Diaku, showcasing an unexpected display of strength, used his sheer physical prowess to open the entrances ahead of the group. Amidst the sense of wonder, Ki Young's surprise grew as a status window notification materialized before him. To his astonishment, he received a rare rank quest, one that demanded survival in the face of impending challenges. As Ki Young and his comrades descended into the underground dungeon, the compulsory rare rank quest commenced, marking a critical juncture in their adventure. However, the revelation unfolded that both parties, not just Kiyungs, had received the same quest through their respective status window systems. The realization hit them all at once when a horde of monsters awaited and their survival hinged on defeating this formidable threat. The underground dungeon revealed a monstrous foe unlike anything they had faced before. Standing before them was not just a colossal golem, but a grotesque entity with three heads fused onto a single body. The sheer unnaturalness of the creature and the eerie sight of the multi-headed monster sent shivers down Kiyung's spine. The horde of three-headed monsters exuded a disturbing excitement, their numerous eyes fixated on the group as if they had just stumbled upon a delectable meal. Kiyung's immediate instinct was to lead his comrades out of the ominous room, recognizing the overwhelming threat posed by the grotesque creatures. However, the situation took an unexpected turn as a loud crashing sound echoed through the dungeon. To intensify matters, the entrance of the room abruptly sealed shut, blocking their escape route just as they were on the brink of fleeing. In the midst of the chaos, Jinho, displaying a different approach, rallied his party to wield their weapons and face the oncoming threat head-on. Utilizing his mind's eye, Kiyung unveiled crucial information about the three-headed monsters known as the Evolved Demons, and to his surprise, their stats were all ranked as common. Despite their terrifying appearance, the monsters possessed remarkably low intelligence and eyesight, a revelation that could potentially be exploited in combat. However, the sheer number of evolved demons presented a challenge made Kiyong grapple with the realization that their defensive capabilities might be insufficient. In the face of adversity, Hyun Sung, the stalwart leader, radiated determination. Despite the odds, he expressed unwavering confidence that they could overcome the imminent threat. Ki Young, who admired and looked up to Hyun Sung, found reassurance in his leader's certainty, deciding to trust in Hyun Sung's conviction to guide them through the perilous situation. Jin Ho, Hyun Sung, and Diaku swiftly armed themselves with shields, adopting a strategic formation to confront the looming threat of the evolved demons. However, the cohesion of their defensive stance was disrupted when Diaku noticed the two leaders, Jin Ho and Hyun Sung, were drawing closer. A subtle but palpable standoff ensued, a clash of determined leaders each vying to establish dominance and prove themselves as the superior decision maker in this perilous situation. In this critical moment, Hyun Sung, known for his calm and strategic approach, assessed Jin Ho's intentions, trying to decipher his next move. Jin Ho, wearing a smirk that hinted at confidence, took the initiative, asserting that he would lead the charge against the oncoming horde of monsters. Jinho, displaying an unyielding resolve, charged fearlessly at the oncoming horde of evolved demons. Kiyung, observing the unfolding scenario, shifted his gaze to Hyun Sung, and rather than joining the frontline assault, Hyun Sung seemed uncomfortable in Jinho's presence. Kiyung, ever strategic, conserved his magical power, ready to intervene in case of an emergency. As Kiyung contemplated his next move, an unexpected development unfolded in the blink of an eye. Hyun Sung vanished from sight, moving with the swiftness of lightning. 
His nonchalant expression belied the incredible speed at which he maneuvered through the battlefield. Caught off guard by Hyun Sung's unexpected attack, Jin Ho swiftly raised his defenses, successfully parrying the sword aimed at him. Despite the surprise, Jin Ho wore a smirk, his composure unshaken, and he inquired about Hyun Sung's intentions. Even so, there was a genuine sense of admiration in Jin Ho's acknowledgement of Hyun Sung's strength. In an attempt to assert dominance and display his prowess, Jin Ho effortlessly dispatched the approaching monsters without even sparing them a glance. Hyun Sung, undeterred by the taunts and uninterested in the theatrics, remained focused solely on the task at hand. With a calm demeanor and an air of nonchalance, he efficiently eliminated the monsters that crossed his path. The spectacle unfolding before them left the room in stunned silence. Even Jin Ho, who had initially tried to taunt Hyun Sung, found himself astonished by the sheer prowess displayed in Hyun Sung's fighting skills. Ki Young, though anticipating Hyun Sung's capabilities, couldn't help but marvel at the display if Hyun Sung truly just a human, or did he possess extraordinary abilities beyond comprehension. Turning his attention to Diakgu, Ki Young noticed a transformation in his demeanor. Inspired by Hyun Sung's example, Diakgu summoned newfound strength, wielding his shield like a modern day Captain America, which sent the evolved monsters scattering, proving himself as a formidable asset to the team. Overwhelmed with happiness, ki -young couldn't contain his cheers for Diakgu, recognizing that he had evolved into more than just a simple shieldsman. In ki -young's eyes, the transformation in Diakgu was nothing short of awe-inspiring. No longer confined to the role of a mere shieldsman, Diakgu had evolved into a warrior. Yet, ki -young's anticipation wasn't solely centered on Diakgu's prowess. He was equally eager to witness Heian's capabilities in combat. Hain began to chant her magical incantations, a radiant green light emanated from her palms, casting an enchanting glow in the room. With a flourish, Hain opened her palms, unleashing a spell she referred to as the Wind Bomb. The manifestation of her magic left the evolved monsters utterly flabbergasted. The unleashed power of Hain's Wind Bomb proved to be a formidable force, scattering the evolved monsters in a single, devastating strike. Ki Young couldn't contain his happiness, cheering for Haiyan's impressive display of magical prowess, though a subtle unease crept into Ki Young's mind when Haiyan's incantations expressing a desire to be with him. Despite the discomfort, Ki Young found a certain beauty in the fact that Haiyan wasn't just wielding her magic, but also implementing strategic moves by diverting the attention of the evolved monsters toward Jinho's party. Eager to praise Haiyan for her accomplishments, Ki Young approached her with excitement. However, his enthusiasm was tempered by a subtle piece of advice for Haiyan to avoid expending her powers on aiding Jinho's team. Haiyan, fueled by her deep affection for Ki Young, didn't hesitate for a moment. Without a word, she promptly followed Ki Young's advice. In Ki Young's strategic mind, this was a chance to rid themselves of the perceived bad guys and strengthen the unity of those who remained. Meanwhile, the situation on Jinho's side took a dire turn as his party began to struggle against the relentless onslaught of monsters where they have to turn to Heian, urging her to unleash her magical abilities. Siakwu, overcome with panic and teary-eyed, implored Heian to use her magic immediately. However, panic turned to sheer terror as Jinho, their supposed savior, informed Siakwu that he needed to recharge his magic. A wave of fear gripped Siakwu as he sprinted away, desperate to evade the approaching evolved monsters. Jinho's companions, Yijun and Jichyo, struggled to contend with the powerful blows from the evolved monsters, taking punishing hits that left them reeling. Siakwu, despite his desperate attempt to escape, fell victim to the relentless assault of the monsters' fists. Heian and Kiyong observed the chaotic scene, a pleased surprise evident in their expressions as the monsters seemed to align with their unspoken desire to eliminate the perceived bad guys within the team. Ki Young, with a hint of jest in his tone, jokingly encouraged Jin Ho's struggling companions to hang tight amidst the chaotic combat. Yi Jun and Jichuo, grappling with a dire situation, turned their hopeful gazes towards Ki Young. They silently wished for some form of support or intervention that could turn the tide in their favor. Ki Young, despite his deep disdain for Jin Ho's party, recognized the need to intervene and support them in their dire situation. Preparing to summon his magic, Ki Young adopted a sarcastic tone, telling Jin Ho's companions to hold on and think about their loved ones awaiting them on Earth. Seeing through Ki Young's attempt to buy time, Yi Jun and Jichiol urgently implored him to use his magic without delay. 
Unfazed by their pleas, Kiyung sported a sly grin as he gathered his mana, finally ready to unleash his magical abilities. With a flourish, Kiyung summoned his magic, unleashing the fiery brilliance of his fireball against the evolved monsters. The sudden surge of flames left the monsters astonished. The dazzling flames summoned by Kiyung's fireball engulfed the evolved monsters, leaving them in a state of shock and chaos. Jinho's party, relieved and grateful for the much-needed assistance, watched as the flames subsided. The initial relief felt by Jinho's party was short-lived, as they soon realized that the flames from Kiyong's fireball weren't as effective as anticipated. To their dismay, the evolved monsters, though burning, continued to move and retaliate. Yijun and Jichiol exchanged alarmed glances, realizing that the situation had taken an unexpected and dangerous turn putting them at the mercy of the enraged evolved monsters. Kiyung's cunning strategy became apparent as it was revealed that he intentionally held back the full potential of his fireball magic to provide the monsters with a fiery coating, a tool to eliminate Jinho's party. A sense of accomplishment and amusement danced in Kiyung's eyes as he observed the unfolding consequences of his calculated actions. He even gave them a name called the Blazing Demon. The flames had an unexpected consequence as the system identified them as the evolved flaming demon, despite gaining a burning instinct ability. These creatures remained low-class monsters with poor eyesight and intelligence. The flames, while making them appear terrifying, proved to be a double-edged sword, rapidly depleting their stamina and turning their apparent strength into a liability. Kiyung, taking a calculated gamble, had orchestrated the situation to fool Jinho's party into thinking they were in real trouble. Apologizing and feigning ignorance, Kiyung expressed regret over unintentionally buffing the monsters. In his mind, he eagerly anticipated Jinho's response, wondering if he would rely on his magic abilities or wield his sword to resolve the predicament created by the strategically coded evolved flaming demon. As chaos unfolded and the evolved flaming demon closed in on Jinho's party, Jinho swiftly took charge, advising his team to refrain from panicking and urging them to maintain their ranks. But Siaku, displaying a notable lack of courage, opted to flee rather than face the monsters alongside his party. Kiyung, observing this, felt a sense of disappointment in Jinho's leadership, questioning whether Jinho genuinely desired a better life in the other world. Amidst the struggle with the monsters, a dire situation unfolded as Jichol found himself ensnared by the creatures, held like a toy doll in their grip. In desperation, Jichiol called out for Yijun, hoping for salvation from his companions, but Jinho and Yijun were just equally concerned for their friend. Facing a dire situation with Jichiol captured by the evolved flaming demon, Jinho turned to Heian and Kiyung, hoping for assistance in overcoming the peril his party found themselves in. Kiyung, however, explained that his magic mana had run out, leaving him unable to offer immediate help. Diaku, entering the scene, inquired about the possibility of saving Jichiol, however, Kiyung, concerned about the potential danger, voiced his reluctance that attempting a rescue might place them in a precarious situation. He further explained that he and Heian would explore alternative ways to save Jichiol, all the while harboring a deep desire for safety rather than making sacrifices. As the tension rose, Jichiol found himself with no escape options, trapped in the clutches of the evolved flaming demon. As Jichiol remained captured by the evolved flaming demon, a sense of helplessness enveloped Jinho and his best friend Yijun. Yijun's anguished scream echoed as tears filled his eyes. While Jinho, displaying displeasure at losing a comrade, grappled with the consequences of their predicament. Kiyung, however, held a contrasting belief that Jichiol's fate could have been averted if Jinho had chosen to reveal and utilize his concealed powers. Despite the apparent disadvantage, Kiyong saw an opportunity for their party in Jichiol's unfortunate incident, perhaps realizing that the dynamics within Jinho's party might shift due to the perceived failure of leadership. Feeling the weight of the situation and sensing the need for action, Kiyong turned to Heian, signaling that it was her moment to shine. Without hesitation, Heian stepped forward and summoned her powerful water attribute magic called the Gush Forth. The potent water magic cascaded down upon the evolved flaming demon, effectively extinguishing the flames and eliminating the monsters. Kiyung, impressed by Heian's abilities, offered her heartfelt praise, while Diakgu and Hyunsung couldn't conceal their astonishment at the display of her magic. In the midst of the celebrations and admiration for Heian's prowess, Yijun stood in deep frustration, mourning the loss of his friend. Fueled by grief and frustration, 
Yijun's temper flared. He directed his anger at Kiyong, yelling with tears streaming down his face. Jinho and Siakwu, observing Yijun's loss of control, became concerned, while Heian and Diakgu were taken aback by the sudden outburst. Kiyong, observing the situation, turned to Heian. The intensity in her gaze hinted at her obsessive tendencies as she witnessed someone daring to hurt the person she considered the love of her life. In the face of Yijun's anger and frustration, Kiyong, maintaining a calm demeanor, offered an apology for the loss of Jichiol. However, he rationalized that Jichiol's demise was the best option for their survival. He taunted Yijun with a sly grin, emphasizing that the paramount goal was to ensure everyone's survival. His belief further fueled Yijun's sense of betrayal and despair. Acting on his overwhelming emotions, Yijun, without hesitation, threw a punch at Kiyong's face. Witnessing the sudden act of aggression, Diakgu and Heian panicked, rushing to Kiyong's side out of concern. Attempting to defend Kiyong, Diakgu and Heian intervened, but Kiyong, blocking them, reassured that he was alright, concealing the pain he felt from the punch. In his mind, Kiyong believed he needed to endure the punch to dampen the fury of Jinho's party and present himself as pitiable. However, Yijun remained unconvinced, refusing to believe anything Kiyong said or how he portrayed himself. Recognizing the need to defuse the escalating tension, Jinho intervened to halt Yijun's overwhelmed state, preventing any further conflict on their hunting trip. Approaching Yijun closely, Jinho reminded him to stick to their agenda, emphasizing the change of plans due to Jichiol's elimination. Attempting to calm the situation, Yijun struggled to regain composure. Meanwhile, Jinho approached Kiyong to offer an apology. He explained that Yijun's actions stemmed from grief over the loss of his old friend, reassuring Kiyong that there were no ill intentions. Despite Jinho's efforts to mend the situation, Yijun remained defiant, publicly stating that Kiyong himself admitted to purposefully sabotaging Jinho's party. Kiyong, recognizing the need to appear pitiful, instantly bowed his head, pleading for forgiveness. He apologized persistently, shouldering the blame for the turmoil within the group. The shocking scene left Hyunsung, Diakgu, and Heian equally surprised as they witnessed Kiyong's unexpected act of submission. Continuing with his strategy to appear pitiful, Kiyong took it a step further by pretending to tremble, insisting that he should be left behind due to his perceived liability. He overacted to an extent, stating that he deserved the same fate as Jichiol since he failed to save him. Kiyong's theatrics proved highly effective, managing to convince even his own comrades that his distress was genuine. Deep down, he felt a sense of satisfaction as people seemed to rally to his side, offering comfort and support. However, amid the crowd, Yijun remained unconvinced, refusing to buy into Kiyong's act, but Jinho, Recognizing the escalating tension, made efforts to calm Yijun down. Siakwu, drawing from his own experience, advised Yijun to calm down and be cautious around Kiyong, emphasizing Kiyong's cunning nature. He suggested laying low around Kiyong, particularly after witnessing Kiyong's capabilities in saving Heian from Siakwu's advances. Yijun attempted to engage in a civil conversation with Kiyong, hoping for resolution, however, Kiyong remained entrenched in his self pity act. Kiyong was deeply apologizing to Yijun while his strong companions stood by, offering intimidating glares to encourage Yijun to accept the apology. Feeling pressured by both Kiyong and his own party, Yijun grappled with the decision to accept the apology and defuse the tension or maintain his stance of distrust towards Kiyong. Yijun, feeling trapped and misunderstood, grappled with the idea that he had become the antagonist in the situation. Convinced that Kiyong was relishing in the manipulation, Yijun chose to walk away, unable to endure the perceived injustice. In contrast, Kiyong reveled in the success of his acting, finding amusement in the chaos he had orchestrated. While he enjoyed the satisfaction of fooling those he deemed as adversaries, Jin Ho keenly observed Kiyong, suspecting that the entire display was nothing more than an elaborate act. In Jin Ho's contemplative thoughts, he found himself surprisingly impressed by Kiyong's intellect, considering the possibility of recruiting him into his team. However, Hyun Sung, ever observant and perceptive, discreetly watched Jin Ho, sensing the ulterior motives behind his consideration of Kiyong. This awareness left Hyun Sung feeling uneasy about Jin Ho's intentions. Siakwu, attempting to lighten the mood, struck up a conversation with Kiyong. He acknowledged Kiyong's clever maneuvering and playfully teased him about manipulating everyone to be on his side, 
subtly alluding to the controversial events that transpired, including Jichiol's unfortunate fate. The cringe on Kiyoung's face was so palpable that it startled Siakwu, triggering memories of a past encounter where he crossed Kiyoung's boundaries. Siakwu promptly retreated to the safety of his own party, realizing that getting too close to Kiyoung might lead to undesirable consequences. Kiyoung's demeanor turned serious, a clear indication that he was keeping his guard up, especially around Jinho's party. The tension in the air lingered, and Kiyoung's focus shifted as he spat out some blood, feeling the aftermath of the punch delivered by Yi Jun. The pain setting in, Hyun Sung approached Kiyoung to check on his well-being, concerned about the effects of the blow. Despite the pain he felt, Kiyoung maintained a facade of normalcy around Hyun Sung, refraining from expressing the discomfort he experienced. Hyun Sung, showing genuine concern, extended his hand as a gesture of assistance, an act that touched Kiyoung deeply. In that moment, Kiyoung cherished the privilege of being Hyun Sung's comrade, finding solace in the bond they shared. However, in the midst of this comforting moment, Hyun noticed something amiss. She picked up a tooth a tangible piece of evidence from the recent confrontation. Kiyoung, sensing the burning rage behind him, became aware that someone harbored intense emotions, potentially leading to further complications within the group. Facing Heian's intense emotions, Kiyoung felt a mixture of fear and surprise. As he looked into her tear-filled eyes, he realized that her concern for his well-being ran deep. The unexpected act of keeping his tooth added a layer of sentimentality to the situation, leaving Kiyoung perplexed. Sensing the delicate balance between Heian's love and her potential for vengeful rage, Kiyoung chose to play the victim a bit more by coughing up blood from his injury. Heian, deeply concerned and emotional, rushed to Kiyoung's side. Her demeanor shifted from sweet to a more intense, almost frightening expression as thoughts of vengeance crossed her mind. Kiyoung, however, recognized the need to tread carefully. He pondered the delicate situation, realizing that if he allowed Heian to unleash her fury on Jinho's party, it could lead to more chaos. Deciding to lay low for the time being, Kiyoung understood that strategic patience was key. As the group settled in after the tumultuous incident, Siakwu's displeasure towards Kiyoung became evident through intense glares. Kiyoung, feeling a sense of satisfaction from getting under their skin, especially Siakwu's, subtly conveyed that he would never allow Siakwu to touch Heian. Taking advantage of the situation, Kiyoung decided to play with Siakwu's emotions, further stoking his jealousy. He clung to Heian, hugging her gently. Deep down, Kiyoung enjoyed the game he was playing, reveling in the knowledge that Siakwu would never have the chance to be with Heian. Intent on taking his acting to the next level, Kiyoung decided to add a touch of clumsiness to his performance. Pretending to trip, he executed a graceful fall, portraying himself as a cute and clumsy guy. The act worked seamlessly as Heian quickly caught him, holding his waist. The gesture made the atmosphere become overly romantic, but Kiyoung cringed a bit at the unintended intensity. Despite the unintended romantic flair, at least Kiyoung achieved his objective. As Kiyoung glanced back at Siakwu, he couldn't help but revel in the jealousy written all over Siakwu's face. It was as if Kiyoung had stolen Siakwu's lover right from under his nose. While Hain didn't mind being gently hugged by Kiyoung, Siakwu was visibly affected, slowly losing his composure. In an attempt to regain some control and perhaps play the hero himself, Siakwu offered assistance to Hain. However, due to their tumultuous past, Heian promptly rejected him, asserting her independence and straightforwardly telling Siakwu to mind his own business. Siakwu's surprise at the rejection was evident, and Kiyoung couldn't help but chuckle. He believed that if Siakwu had exercised some self-control in the past, he wouldn't have found himself in this predicament. Amidst the mental games, they continued with their agenda and faced a horde of monsters in the next room. Everyone immediately gets in their position to be prepared to fight. Meanwhile, Kiyoung suggested to Heian that she should stay close to Diakgu, but Heian expressed concern for Kiyoung's well-being and insisting on staying with him. Kiyoung, always thinking a step ahead, decided to provoke Siakwu intentionally, hoping to instigate a physical confrontation. Confident in his agility to dodge attacks from the opposing party, Kiyoung believed that this would create an opportunity for Heian to enter the scene and heal him promptly. Additionally, Kiyoung was chill to combat the monsters since Hyun Sung gave him an item that could shield him from the adversaries. In Kiyoung's mind, he will make Siakwu the antagonist in the team. With a mischievous grin on his face, Kiyoung openly questioned Siakwu about his jealousy. 
As usual, Siaku, who can't control himself, loses his cool and tried to confront Kiyung. Siaku succumbed to anger and swung his sword at Kiyung. Despite the pain from the impact, Kiyung motivated himself to endure it. He motivated himself that that enduring this physical pain was a crucial step toward achieving his plan of painting Siaku as the antagonist. Siaku's sudden attack on Kiyong caught everyone's attention, even distracting Diaku and Heian from their battle with the monsters. The room was filled with astonishment at the sight of Siaku using his sword against Kiyong. To everyone's surprise, Siaku seemed oddly proud of his actions. While this might have been part of Jinho's party's plan to eliminate Hyunsung's party, Jinho himself appeared displeased with the unfolding situation. The mastermind behind the plan was visibly frustrated, realizing that Siaku's actions had disrupted the carefully laid out scheme. On the other hand, Siaku appeared proud of his bold move, seemingly unaware of the potential consequences. However, for Kiyong, this was a calculated sacrifice. He had strategically placed himself in a position to provoke Siaku, anticipating that it would force Jinho's party to reveal their true intentions. Jinho tried his best to be ignorant since Siaku's action just declared a duel to Hyunsung's party. Since things escalated so quickly, Kiyong is now hoping for his own team to make a move. Kiyong, hopeful for a swift response from Hyunsung and for his time to shine. As he observed his friends, Diaku and Heian, took immediate action to assist him. The sight of their quick intervention brought delight to Kiyong. Meanwhile, Yijun's displeasure was evident, reflecting the tension within Jinho's party. Kiyong tried his best to press the wound to prevent it from bleeding more. Caught off guard, Kiyong felt the unexpected strike on his back as Yijun took advantage of the moment to avenge his best friend Jichyo. It was like his world was collapsing to see a wound on his back. Heian, witnessing Kiyong's injury, felt her world crumble. In Kiyong's fading consciousness, he observed the profound sadness in Heian's eyes. As he slowly lost awareness, Heian hurriedly approached him, desperate to salvage the situation. In the chaos that ensued, Heian desperately tried to wake the trembling Kiyong. Meanwhile, Diaku took a stand and approached Jinho to issue a warning, but Jinho, however, feigned ignorance about Siaku's intentions. With the situation spiraling out of control, Jinho, faced with the prospect of further harm, contemplated eliminating both Siaku and Kiyong. However, Hyunsung, swift and determined, intervened to prevent Jinho from causing more damage. Caught off guard, Jinho found himself struggling to match the strength and resolve of Hyunsung in this unexpected confrontation. Jinho, determined to maintain his stance, ensured that he still held his ground even after being pushed away by Hyunsung. Jinho felt challenged since he expected that he'd be less suspected from his party. The unexpected turn of events had thrust Jinho into a challenging situation as he now faced the formidable Hyunsung in a duel. While Siaku and Yijun visibly trembled in fear, Hyunsung instructed Diaku to stand guard over Heian and Kiyong. Without hesitation, Diaku swiftly approached Heian and Kiyong, ready to offer his assistance and protection. Since Siaku and Yijun realized that Siaku just pushed them out of the bus, they decided to flee in the hunting trip. But Siaku, fueled by a desire for revenge and ignoring the urging of his frightened companion, Yijun, decided to stay behind in the hunting trip. Firmly committed to confronting Kiyong and settling the score, Siaku clutched his sword with unwavering confidence. Diaku and Heian made sure to be loud as they could so that Kiyong would stay awake. But then Diaku realized that Heian has an item that could be used for healing, which impressed Kiyong. Diaku, in a state of panic and urgency, urged Heian to use her magical ring to heal Kiyong's wounds. With determination and a deep sense of hope, Heian summoned the magic, directing it towards Kiyong's injured body. As the magical energy enveloped him, Kiyong experienced a soothing sensation. Kiyong, now fully healed and with a renewed sense of vigor, was astonished to find his body restored. Even the missing tooth had miraculously grown back. Diaku and Heian shared a moment of relief and celebration over Kiyong's unexpected revival. However, Siaku remained steadfast in his desire for vengeance against Kiyong. Undeterred, he attempted to confront Kiyong once more, only to be intercepted by Diaku, who stood as a formidable barrier to prevent any harm befalling his friend. Amidst the interpersonal tension, the looming presence of the horde of monsters in the room served as a pressing reminder that their collective survival was still at stake. Kiyong realized that it was time to utilize the unique capabilities of his magical ring. 
Activating the ring, he summoned a protective barrier that enveloped their immediate surroundings, shielding them from the menacing horde of monsters. Diaku, witnessing the impressive display of magical prowess, couldn't help but be astonished while Kiyong was relieved that Hyunsung is a reliable companion. However, Kiyong's relief was short-lived as he noticed Heian's absence within the safety of the barrier. Given Haiyan's formidable magical abilities and her unpredictable nature, Kiyoung immediately deduced that she had likely pursued Yi Jun, who had chosen to flee in the midst of the turmoil. Despite the chaotic circumstances, Diaku, burdened by guilt for not reaching Kiyoung in time, took the opportunity to offer a sincere apology. In response, Kiyoung displayed a compassionate side, gently patting Diaku's head as a gesture of reassurance. Understanding the weight on Diaku's shoulders, Kiyoung in turn expressed his own apology for any perceived carelessness. The soft-hearted Diaku couldn't help but to be in tears while being comforted by Kiyoung. Kiyoung, with a joking tone, requested Diaku to halt his tears, teasing him about the contrast between his emotional demeanor and robust physique. Despite Kiyoung's acknowledgement of some miscalculations, he found solace in the overall outcome of the situation. On the other hand, Yijun ran as fast as he could to escape. Yet, a surge of fury gripped him even more intensely when Jinho had callously cast them into a perilous situation, forcing them to confront a formidable adversary like Hyunsung without warning. While Yijun was completely off guard escaping, he was caught by Heian's wind blade. Everything happened so fast that he couldn't react when his foot was decapitated. Yijun's frantic gaze shifted backward, only to be met with the unnerving sight of Heian veiled in an unsettling aura of terror. Panic surged through him, prompting desperate cries for assistance, unable to fathom the abrupt shift in Heian's demeanor. Heian uses her air bomb magic to prevent Yijun from screaming. Yijun was shocked as he struggles to talk, his mouth filled with blood, while Heian explained how he crossed the line by harming her precious Kiyang. But for Haiyan, she was more concerned by the fact that Yijun just spit some blood on her clothes and afraid that Kiyoung might punish her. This time, Haiyan has a bit of self-control as she decided to keep Yijun alive with a horrifying warning to never cross the line again. Unfortunately, Yijun's life already flashed before his eyes. He remembered the words he spout as he runs away, and the sight of Haiyan with a predatorial eyes. Haiyan was surprised as Yijun passed away in front of her. Meanwhile, on Kiyoung and Diaku's front, the duo successfully apprehended Siaku. Siaku still had the guts as he insinuated that their actions might incur Jinho's wrath, suggesting potential consequences for daring to apprehend him. Siaku exuded confidence, asserting that Heian would eventually regret not choosing him and that Hyunsung had abandoned them all. Kiyoung, however, seized the opportunity to emphasize that Siaku had missed a critical point in their party's change of plans. With a sly grin, Kiyoung clarified that Jinho was the one who abandoned his comrades. Deep down, Kiyoung couldn't help but feel satisfied that Jinho had recruited someone as light-headed as Siakwu, which made executing his plans much easier. Seizing the chance to taunt Siakwu, Kiyoung expressed gratitude, claiming that Siakwu was the reason he was now closer to Heian. This only fueled Siakwu's anger, and he vowed revenge. Kiyong, however, dismissed Siakwu's threats, metaphorically stating that he had merely provided him with utensils and a bowl of rice, though considering Siakwu was currently tied up and unable to use them. The atmosphere got darker as Kiyong presented Siakwu with a grim choice of death to relieve himself from his predicament. Diaku, anticipating the severity of Kiyong's decision, was advised to look away if he found it too difficult. Siakwu, feeling the weight of impending doom, yelled out in protest. Kiyoung, however, remained steadfast, emphasizing that the options presented were the most reasonable given Siakwu's actions. The realization dawned on Siakwu that he would now have to face the consequences of his choices. Accused of madness, Kiyoung responded with a smile, claiming that Siakwu was no different. Stripped of his earlier arrogance, Siakwu realized he had to humble himself and begged Kiyoung for mercy. However, Kiyoung remained unmoved by any sense of remorse as he raised his spear. Kiyoung, having brought an end to Siaku's existence, reflected on the familiar scenes of death he had witnessed before. Recollections of people pleading for salvation, only to be led into traps by Kiyoung himself, resurfaced in his mind, in which he dispatched Siaku was, in essence, no different from his past actions. Kiyoung acknowledged the inevitability of such actions in the quest for survival. 
Siakwu, now a part of the Fallen, joined the ranks of Yijun and Jichiol in the realm of the departed. Kiyong then sought to comfort Diaku. He reminded him that the choice they made was one of necessity, preventing them from meeting a similar fate. As the atmosphere grew heavier, Diaku initiated a conversation with Kiyong. He inquired about his religious beliefs or if he was a Christian. Kiyong straightforwardly asserted that he did not believe in any gods. Amidst the aftermath, the status window system emerged, presenting Kiyong with the opportunity to choose a new occupation. The unexpected appearance of the status window brought a spark of excitement to Kiyong. Diaku, taken aback, witnessed Kiyong's renewed determination. In a more serious tone, Kiyong shared a piece of advice with Diaku, urging him never to succumb to death. Continuing their journey through the dungeon, Diaku and Kiyong engaged in a conversation about choosing a new occupation. The decision proved to be challenging for Kiyong, as all the options seemed appealing. As they progressed, Hain caught up with them and immediately sought out Kiyong. She embraced him tightly, expressing her concern for his well-being. Hain inquired about any lingering pain, and in response, Kiyong shared the news of Siakwu's demise. Ignoring Siakwu's fate, Hain expressed her primary concern for Kiyong's well-being. When Diaku inquired about Hain's whereabouts during the recent events, he sought an explanation from her. Kiyong contemplated whether to assist Heian by crafting a narrative that portrayed her pursuit of Hyunsung as an act of concern. However, Heian chose honesty over deception and revealed that she hadn't gone after Hyunsung. She struggled to articulate her emotions regarding Kiyong's injuries and the anger she harbored towards those responsible. Diaku surprisingly empathized with Heian, recognizing her emotional struggle despite her actions against Yujun. Witnessing Heian's tears, Diaku felt a sense of panic, understanding the weight of the situation. Kiyun, however, assured Heian that she had nothing to apologize for, expressing genuine appreciation for her protective anger when he was harmed. In Kiyun's eyes, Heian remained the lovely and kind person he cherished. Kiyun, sensing Heian's emotional turmoil, comforted her by gently cuddling her. Observing the situation, Diaku felt a sense of accomplishment, believing that he successfully brought Kiyong and Heian closer together. Kiyong, noticing Diaku's satisfaction, urged him to coax Heian. Despite the unintentional fear factor, Diaku was content, having orchestrated the circumstances that seemed to foster romance between Kiyong and Heian. Kiyong, perceptive to Diaku's hidden agenda, realized the intentions behind his friend's actions. After some time, Hyunsung caught up with them. Upon seeing him, he speculated that Jinho had proven to be a formidable opponent. Hyunsung then inquired about the other party's whereabouts. In response, Kiyong openly admitted to eliminating them. In response, Hyunsung revealed that he, too, had successfully dealt with Jinho without uttering a word. Hyunsung clarified that engaging in a duel with Jinho's party was a necessary choice for their survival, emphasizing the potential danger to the camp if they were the ones eliminated. Kiyong appreciated the alignment of their perspectives and felt reassured by Hyunsung's understanding. Hyunsung commended his team for making the right decision, acknowledging that they would face even greater challenges in the future. Despite uncertainty about the comfort his words might provide, Hyunsung expressed sincere hope that the group would overcome the challenges ahead. Although the team still harbored dismay over recent events, they collectively expressed gratitude towards Hyunsung for his understanding. As they moved forward, Hyunsung inquired about Kiyong's injury from the opponents. Kiyong expressed gratitude, acknowledging that without the special abilities bestowed upon them by Hyunsung's gifts, they might not have survived. With genuine delight, Kiyong swore never to forget Hyunsung's generosity. Observing Hyunsung's demeanor, Kiyong could sense the leader's pride in their accomplishments. After the intense events, Diaku suggested that their team take a break and rest in the dungeon considering they were all exhausted. As they walked together, Kiyong felt that their bond was strengthening, forged through the crucible of the crises they had overcome. He took comfort in the assurance that his relationship with the team, especially under Hyunsung's leadership, would remain steadfast and reliable. Kiyong dazed at his comrades with a genuine expression, treating them as his cherished treasures. As they settled in the temporary shelter, the room, adorned with a candle chandelier, the room was filled with the warmth and comfort of a lit fire. Kiyong, still reveling in the realization of the value he placed on his friends, caught the attention of Hyunsung, who noticed him lost in thought. To divert attention, Kiyong changed the subject and informed Hyunsung about the occupation options presented in his status window. 
Hyunsung, curious about Ki Young's choice, inquired about the kind of job he intended to take. Ki Young, still uncertain about his decision, sought advice from Hyunsung and opened his status window, allowing the team to contribute to the decision making process. The status window began loading as it prepared the options for Ki Young. As the status window loaded and presented the options, Ki Young was faced with several choices. Summoner, Demonic Lancer, Dark Magician, Alchemist, and Fire Magician, all ranked as rare occupations. Ki Young, while acknowledging the greatness of the available options, couldn't help but feel relieved that the Swindler occupation was not among them. Ki Young also considered the potential liability if Diaku were to choose a commander job, especially given Diaku's perceived lack of intelligence. As he delved into the details, the first option, Summoner, this occupation would grant him the ability to summon creatures and messenger familiars, with potential upgrades to other summoner jobs like Tamer, Familiar Summoner, and Summoner of Magical Creatures. Kiyoung envisioned a scenario where he wouldn't have to engage much in combat, relying on his summoned minions. The next option was Demonic Lancer, a mid-range position that utilized both magic and lances, requiring intermediate knowledge of spears and magic. As Kyung proceeded to read about the Dark Magician, Hyunsung expressed interest, signaling that he wanted to listen to the details. For the Dark Magician, Kyung discovered that it was a long-range magician specializing in dark magic, and its power level seemed to surpass the other occupations listed. Heian anticipated as Kyung prepared to read the Alchemist and Fire Magician occupation. The Alchemist occupation is more focused on studying magic chemistry rather than engaging in combat. This occupation involves continuous research and offers potential upgrades such as drum manufacturer, magician of alchemy, or homunculus expert. As Kyung prepared to read the details of a fire magician, Hyunsung kindly interrupted to express his opinion about Kyung choosing an occupation. Hyunsung believed that Kyung's magic ability wasn't high enough for a demonic lancer, and he lacked the necessary skills to use a spear effectively. Though Diakgu and Heian were supportive, Hyunsung wanted to be practical, emphasizing that Kyung wasn't built for battle. Additionally, Hyunsung expressed concerns about the high mana consumption of a fire magician and the potential dangers of being a dark magician. Kiyoung was relieved that Hyunsung shared his mindset, both agreeing that the best options were either alchemist or summoner. Kiyoung imagined that if the other world was set in a historical timeline, people would likely protest if they saw him using magical abilities. Despite this, he was grateful that Hyunsung was providing genuine insights and clues to help him choose the best occupation. Hyunsung believed that Kiyoung should also consider the alchemist job, highlighting its potential for creating potions and medicines. Although the summoner job was enticing, Kiyoung could explore creating a homunculus. Because of Hyunsung's valuable insights, Kiyoung finally made a decision on which occupation to choose. Opting for the alchemist occupation, a rare one. Kiyoung recognized its importance in providing unlimited supplies for healing and mana boosts. He jokingly remarked to Hyunsung that he would have no competitors in choosing alchemist. As Kiyoung settled on his choice, Diaku entered the scene to share his thoughts. With a serious expression, Diaku suggested that someone like Kiyoung should consider becoming a dark magician. The revelation surprised everyone, although Heian was the only one openly supportive of whatever Kiyoung chose. Hyunsung, however, advocated for the alchemist occupation, arguing that it was the perfect fit for Kiyoung. Another debate ensued between Hyunsung and Diaku, both presenting their cases for what suited Kiyoung best. Diaku enthusiastically imagined Kiyoung as a dark magician, visualizing him as a powerful warlock capable of exterminating monsters. However, Hyunsung disagreed, stating that the dark magician role might look cool publicly, but would be impractical in terms of functionality. To Diaku, the image of Kiyoung wearing a pitch black cloak with an intimidating aura was thrilling. Hyunsung remained adamant about steering Kiyoung towards a more practical option, emphasizing the benefits of the alchemist occupation. While Diaku was enthusiastic about the dark magician idea, Kiyoung couldn't help but agree with Hyunsung's rationale. As the debate continued, Kiyoung started to regret seeking their input, feeling annoyed by the ongoing discussion between Hyunsung and Diaku. Both Diaku and Hyunsung held their ground as they protest which option suits Kiyoung. Tension escalated as Diaku and Hyunsung continued their argument in front of Haiyan, each passionately advocating for their preferred occupation for Kiyoung. Heian, caught in the middle of their dispute, felt the weight of their expectations. 
But as for Heian, she couldn't choose either. In her mind, she envisioned Ki Young as an alchemist, portraying him as a handsome scientist with an air of intellect. She then visualized him as a dark magician, where he exuded a mysterious charm while embracing the darkness. Heian, overwhelmed by her vivid imagination, found it difficult to choose between the two occupations for Ki Young. Meanwhile, as Ki Young contemplated the potential benefits of becoming a dark magician, Hyun Sung seized the opportunity to introduce a remarkable item. To add an interesting twist, the item turned out to be exclusive to alchemists, aligning perfectly with Ki Young's chosen occupation. Hyun Sung, with a mischievous glint in his eyes, presented Ki Young with an alluring item. Ramus Tucker's Introduction to Alchemy. It seemed to be a comprehensive guidebook written by Ramus Tucker himself. Hyun Sung then looked directly at Ki Young's eyes, as if like he was trying to seduce Ki Young to choose alchemy. Ki Young, caught off guard, couldn't help but express his amazement at the coolness of the item. Diakgu, sensing a touch of bribery in Hyun Sung's actions, stepped in to voice his concern. Hyun Sung, undeterred, continued to insist that Ki Young would make an excellent alchemist, emphasizing that the book was designed exclusively for practitioners of alchemy. Ki Young, in his own thoughts, couldn't help but marvel at the array of exclusive items that seemed to be part of Hyun Sung's repertoire. Ki Young couldn't help but notice the apparent wealth of incredible items in Hyun Sung's possession, making him wonder if there was an exclusive inventory for seasoned players that they, as newcomers, hadn't accessed yet. The debate between Hyun Sung and Diakgu continued, each fervently pushing their preferred occupation for Ki Young. Meanwhile, Heian, showing her unwavering support, assured Ki Young that she would stand by whatever decision he made. As Ki Young unveiled his decision, he intentionally let a moment of suspense linger in the air. Diaku's disappointment was palpable when Ki Young announced that he had chosen to be an alchemist, but he quickly clarified that it wasn't influenced by the book Hyun Sung presented. Heian, on the other hand, cheered enthusiastically for Ki Young, while Diaku grappled with his lingering dismay. As Ki Young officially selected the alchemist occupation in the status window, Hyun Sung attempted to console Diaku, urging him to accept the outcome. Without any delay, Ki Young was now a certified alchemist. Remarkably, the system, known for its critical remarks, couldn't conceal its acknowledgement of Ki Young's progress and applauded his excellent choice. Ki Young blushed, pleasantly surprised to receive praise from the system itself. Meanwhile, Hyun Sung couldn't hide his happiness about Ki Young's choice. Ki Young took a closer look and noticed how Hyun Sung's eyes were sparkling as he held the book. Ki Young, in his mind, felt that Hyun Sung was proud because he'd be more useful now. He also felt proud that he's no longer just a barely useful administrator, but an alchemist in the stock exchange. As Hyun Sung handed the book to Ki Young, Diaku remained a good sport and congratulated him for his choice. Ki Young's humility and gratitude shone through as he expressed his determination to fulfill Hyun Sung's expectations. But Hyun Sung remained humble and brought a chuckle from Ki Young, who appreciated the leader's encouraging and supportive nature. Inwardly, Ki Young felt a surge of confidence that becoming an alchemist had not only aligned with his capabilities, but also garnered the trust and investment of Hyun Sung. Ki Young immersed himself in the contents of Ramus Tucker's introduction to alchemy, finding himself engrossed in the knowledge it offered. While the others rested, he was drawn to the intricate details and insights that the book provided. The more he delved into its pages, the clearer it became that pursuing alchemy required specific equipment and exclusive catalysts tailored for alchemists. As he contemplated the potential applications of his current magic, Hyun Sung, who had been immersed in his studies throughout the night, stirred awake. Curious about Ki Young's restlessness, Hyun Sung inquired about the reason behind his sleepless state. Ki Young, with a focused look in his eyes, explained that the wealth of knowledge from the alchemy book kept him engrossed. As Ki Young shared his progress, he couldn't shake off the feeling of awkwardness, observing Hyun Sung's astonishment at the strides he had made in his studies. Sensing the need for a change in topic, Ki Young shifted the conversation to the looming quest they had yet to complete about facing the final boss. Acknowledging the unfinished survival quest, Hyun Sung expressed his hope that the following day would bring forth more clues and opportunities for the team. Ki Young's mind buzzed with theories as he considered the possibility of an escape route nearby. He pondered the intricacies of the other world. The lack of context provided by the starting point in the beginning lingered in his thoughts. As night settled over them, Ki Young's mind churned with thoughts about the continent, a haven for those who survived the tutorial world. 
However, amidst the vastness of the other world, a mysterious figure with long silver hair held a strong aura. This enigmatic man revealed to his underlings that he had discovered a sword and shield, significant elements that would seemingly replace someone he once knew. In the intricate tapestry of this world, guilds and organizations played a significant role, and the silver-haired man found his place within a guild known as Blue. The group began their day with a light-hearted atmosphere, indulging in dad jokes and corny humor. Hyunsung, typically composed and serious, surprised everyone by joining in with the joke, what does a nosy pepper do? Then, with a deadpan expression, he delivered the punchline, gets involved in jalapeno business. Despite the corniness of the joke, Diaku, in particular, couldn't contain his laughter, finding the humor in the dad joke. Kiyong and Heian, while acknowledging the lameness of the joke, exchanged amused glances. Starting the day with laughter, Kiyong felt a sense of comfort and camaraderie among the team members. Despite the challenges they faced, the team was initially concerned about finding a way to escape the perilous environment they found themselves in, especially when encountering formidable adversaries. In the midst of uncertainty and encounters with untrustworthy individuals, Hyunsung emerged as a beacon of light in Kiyoung's life. Kiyoung couldn't help but feel an overwhelming sense of happiness, a sentiment that even Heian couldn't overlook. Heian reciprocated Kiyoung's happiness, appreciating the genuine joy she saw in him. Kiyoung, in turn, felt content knowing that, thanks to Hyunsung, he found himself in the right place. As the party continued their journey, they stumbled upon something intriguing. The party encountered a mysterious, large door that matched Hyunsung's description from the previous night. Kiyoung found it amusing, realizing that Hyunsung seemed satisfied with their journey so far. Hyunsung then gestured to Diakku, indicating that he should be in charge of opening the door. Without wasting any time, Diaku utilized his sturdy physique to push open the massive door. As the door creaked open, Kiyoung experienced a strange sense of deja vu. To their surprise, they found themselves in the same peculiar location once again. Kiyoung couldn't help but feel a sense of confusion since he anticipated an exit to the outside world. They found themselves in a peculiar room adorned with a large magic circle at its center, as if it were a symbol invoking a spell. To add to the mystery, a new quest notification appeared before the party, introducing another set of challenges and uncertainties in their journey. The party was taken aback by the sudden appearance of a rare ranked quest, heightening the level of mystery in the room. The discovery of another door within the space intrigued them, prompting Diaku to swiftly attempt to open it. However, his efforts proved futile as the door remained steadfast and unyielding. Kiyoung found himself contemplating the possible methods for overcoming the challenge presented by the sealed door. Amidst his musings, he was taken by surprise as Hyunsung stepped forward. It seemed as if Hyunsung had an idea, as he confidently approached the mysterious magic circle within the room. Surprisingly, Hyunsung summoned a magic light on his hand. A sense of awe filled the room as Hyunsung summoned a magical light onto his hand, directing it towards the intricate magic circle. Kiyoung, Catching on to the pattern, understood that the party needed to contribute their mana to activate whatever lay beyond the sealed door. With the combined effort of the entire party, the rare compulsory quest was successfully completed. They were all so happy to finally complete the quest they were looking forward before. As the sense of accomplishment settled in, Kiyoung couldn't help but fixate on Hyunsung. The subtle smile on Hyunsung's face hinted at a genuine sense of accomplishment. An acknowledgement of the progress they had made together. However, as his expression shifted to one of anger, it became evident that the journey ahead held even greater challenges. The radiant butterflies in the room captivated Kiyoung's attention, casting a serene and enchanting atmosphere. In that moment, he couldn't help but feel a sense of fulfillment, as if the beauty around him justified the trials they had overcome. As the magical butterflies danced gracefully, a symbol of their collective achievement, the substantial door in the room began to swing open. The door swung open, revealing a blinding light that nearly overwhelmed Kiyoung's senses. As his eyes adjusted, he beheld a man standing before them, holding a microphone, and extended congratulations to the party for their safe return from the tutorial. To Kiyoung's surprise, he felt a deep familiarity with the man standing before them. The man revealed himself as the one responsible for overseeing the tutorial stage, identifying as a vice master of the Blue Guild. The silver-haired man finally revealed his identity as Lee Sang-hee. He expressed his honor at meeting the survivors of the tutorial stage, 
Kyung finally recalled seeing Sanghee before in the starting point, where he appeared almost like a goddess. Overwhelmed by the situation, Diakgu couldn't help but ask Lee Sanghee if he was the one responsible for transporting them to the other world. Sanghee revealed that he served as the vice master under the Holy Empire, established in the name of the goddess Benegor. Sanghi shared that the Blue Guild, to which he belonged, was entrusted with managing the tutorial dungeon for the current season like the others, he was summoned to Earth and compelled to take part in the other world. Having assumed the role of a manager, Sanghi explained that his primary responsibility was to guide the survivors out of the tutorial stage and back to the outside world. Sanghi shared a promising revelation, stating that they not only intended to guide the survivors back to the outside, but also aimed to rescue those still within the tutorial stage. While they were still in the dungeon, Jihai and the rest awaits for them to return. Moreover, Sang He outlined a plan to educate the survivors on adapting to the new environment in the other world. Sang He laid out the logistics, explaining that the door in the dungeon would remain open for three days after the quest had been cleared. However, before proceeding, Sang He requested the party to surrender their weapons, as she intended to guide them to their guild's camp. As they advanced, Sang He delegated the responsibility of caring for the remaining individuals in the tutorial stage to one of her comrades. Intrigued by Sang He's capabilities, Kiyoung decided to utilize his mind's eyes to analyze her. The analysis revealed that Sang He's class was a sacred knight, and her stats were ranked as heroic. Reading Sang He's overview, Kiyoung learned that she was a remarkable individual who had nearly reached her full potential, possessing exceptional endurance and strength. Despite his initial skepticism, Kyung chose to remain calm, especially since Hyun Sung didn't exhibit any negative reactions towards Sang Hee. However, Kyung couldn't shake the feeling that Sang Hee's kindness might be attributed to their party being the ones who cleared the quest. Kyung observed that Sang Hee's people were efficiently handling matters, and the camp was regaining control. However, Kyung felt a pang of disappointment as he realized he would be leaving without bidding farewell to Jihai. Exiting the door, they were greeted by a bright sunny day. The sight of birds freely flying around left them all astonished. Genuine happiness filled their eyes as they beheld a new and different perspective of the world. Before them stretched a civilized and peaceful kingdom. Diaku relished the taste of grilled food, while Sanghi couldn't help but feel fortunate as they witnessed an eagle soaring majestically in the sky. Observing their hunger, Sanghi suggested preparing a meal to celebrate their success in clearing the dungeon. Diaku, filled with enthusiasm, invited everyone to enjoy grilled squid with him. But as he looked at Hyunsung, his emotions are different from the others. Kyung thought that maybe Hyunsung is thinking something deep. Concerned about Hyunsung's demeanor, Kyung approached him. Kyung, sensing a shift in Hyunsung's emotions, subtly attempted to bring him back to the present moment. With a warm and hopeful smile, Kyung expressed his gratitude for the journey they had undertaken together under Hyunsung's leadership. He wished for their continued success as a team, hopeful for the adventures that lay ahead. Hyunsung's face brightened with joy upon hearing Kiyoung's heartfelt words. Hyunsung reciprocated Kiyoung's sentiments with a reassuring smile, expressing his trust and reliance on Kiyoung's support. After a while, the party was given a ride in a carriage. The party continued to soak in the scenery as the carriage traversed the historical settings of the other world. Amidst the enchanting backdrop, Heian and Hyunsung particularly relished the experience as they savored the taste of the grilled squid. Kyung relished every moment, finding a sense of comfort that had eluded him since his transportation to the other world. In the carriage, Sanghi engaged in conversation with Hyunsung, commending them for completing the dungeon in three months, a feat typically accomplished in six. Eager for more information, Diaku joined the discussion, learning about the existence of multiple tutorial dungeons managed by various holy empires. Sanghi mentioned that she would provide more details about the holy empire once they were settled. Kyung observed the surroundings, noting that the place resembled the Middle Ages based on the locals' clothing. While Sanghi acknowledged the prohibition against asking questions about the tutorial, her curiosity prompted her to inquire about how quickly Hyunsung's party managed to clear the dungeon. Sanghi expressed a keen interest in learning more details, particularly given the accomplishment of only four individuals clearing the challenging quest. Hyunsung responded, attributing their success to their teamwork and dynamics. As he mentioned that they also rescued people during the tutorial, Diaku enthusiastically added that Hyunsung played a pivotal role in saving individuals at the camp. 
saying he praised them as amazing newcomers. Later on, the people from the camp are now guided to be a part of the Holy Empire. Kyung observed the stark contrast between the treatment his party received and the terrified survivors being escorted by guards. The guards were stern and the survivors looked scared, creating a stark juxtaposition to the warm reception Hyun Sung's party experienced. In Kyung's imagination, the members of Hyun Sung's party became like celebrities in the town, known for their remarkable achievement in clearing the dungeon. He envisioned them being treated like superstars due to their success. Kyung was proud of their adaptability as a raiding team, feeling a sense of accomplishment for what they had achieved together. After a while, they finally arrived at their destination. The party stepped down from the carriage and marveled at the sight of the castle that served as the guild's headquarters. The luxurious and grandeur of the place left them astonished, as if they were witnessing such opulence for the first time. Kyung took his time to inquire about Hyun Sung's objectives now that they had reached the continent. Once inside the guild's headquarters, the party was taken aback by the extravagant welcome they received from the people inside. They referred to them as the heroes of the raiding team. The unexpected acclaim left the four of them in a state of shock. Sanghee apologized for startling them, explaining that the guild had intended to hold a fancy welcome for them. As the people cheered and welcomed them enthusiastically, Diakku couldn't hide his enthusiasm. However, Ki Young was more focused on analyzing the surroundings, particularly intrigued by the fact that Sang Ye, despite being the vice president, seemed to be organizing all the events. Even with the luxurious surroundings and the warm welcome, Ki Young couldn't shake off his skepticism about the situation. The extravagant nature of the guild headquarters and the eager producers raised Ki Young's suspicions even more. The guild was quick to recognize the potential of Hyun Sung's party and saw them as valuable assets, investors and producers were already expressing their interest in recruiting the party. But one skeptical investor raised concerns about the authenticity of Hyun Sung's party's achievements. The party was led to the dining hall, where a sumptuous meal awaited them. The aroma of the delicious and juicy meat filled the air as they took their seats. Diaku eagerly indulged in the delicious-looking meat, savoring every bite with anticipation. While the rest of the party enjoyed their meal, Kayung remained vigilant, sensing an underlying motive behind the lavish presentation. Kiyoung couldn't shake off the feeling that the guild was putting on an extravagant show for them. Despite Kiyoung's suspicions about the guild's intentions, he couldn't find any concrete evidence to support his doubts. However, his skepticism heightened when he noticed something peculiar that the golden spoon he held felt unnaturally light. This discovery only fueled Ki Young's uncertainty about the guild's true nature. As the introductions unfolded, Ki Young and his friends openly shared their character classes. When it was Ki Young's turn, he nonchalantly announced that he had chosen the path of an alchemist. However, to his surprise, Sang Hee's reaction did not seem to reflect approval or admiration for his chosen occupation. Kyung couldn't shake off the feeling of unease, thinking that he might have made a bad impression on Sang Hee with his choice of being an alchemist. Turning to Hyun Sung, who had initially praised the alchemist occupation, Kyung began to overthink. He wondered if Hyun Sung's encouragement to choose that path was merely a means to receive free potions. Feeling the need to prove himself after the perceived bad impression, Kyung made a silent vow to show the value of being an alchemist. On the other hand, Diakgu was delighted with the meal. Diaku tried to lighten up the mood that his grandmother advised him about not taking food from strangers, although the delicious meal was too tempting to resist. Amidst the comfortable atmosphere, Hyun Sung seized the moment to address the underlying business aspect. He candidly questioned Sang Hee about the possibility of their special treatment being linked to the guild's need for their assistance. Sang Hee, impressed by their perceptiveness, acknowledged that indeed, the guild sought the help of Hyun Sung's party. Sanghi, recognizing the importance of the decision, assured them that there would be no pressure in joining the guild. She proceeded to present various proposal plans, meticulously prepared to demonstrate the benefits and advantages of aligning with the guild. Hyun Sung, not one to beat around the bush, interrupted Sanghi to seek full details before delving into the proposals. Sanghi began by explaining that they were currently in the continent of the other world. Despite the luxurious appearance of the guild, Ki Young remained skeptical, especially noticing that many of the items appeared to be fake. Ki Young's thoughts raced, considering the possibility that Hyun Sung might have a hidden connection to the Blue Guild from his previous life. Panic set in as Hyun Sung began showing signs of interest in joining the guild. 
Kyung wondered if there was something specific that Hyun Sung needed or was hiding from the rest of the party. Kyung, frustrated by Hyun Sung's mysterious nature, struggled to decipher what might be going on in his mind. A theory started forming in Kyung's thoughts that perhaps Hyun Sung was once a pushover in his previous life and ended up in an incompetent guild. The mere idea brought tears to Kyung's eyes, as it seemed to explain Hyun Sung's kind and understanding demeanor. Kyung, consumed by curiosity, wondered about the companions Hyun Sung had in his previous life. Despite the mysteries surrounding Hyun Sung, Kyung was determined to be a brother like figure to him. He strongly felt that Hyun Sung should avoid trusting anyone from this point onward, and hoped that Hyun Sung would place his trust in Kyung alone. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to contribute further, you can now buy me a coffee. Every little bit helps in creating more quality content for you. Just click the Buy Me a Coffee link in the description below. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss a new video.